welcome to Sewing Quarter. I'm Natasha McCarty, and today I've got two lovely guests with me. I've got Janice, she's back again today, and um, we're going to be quilting and bag making with her. And then we've also got lovely Jenny Smith. So, shall we see how today is shaping up? So, 8 a.m., Janice Hobbs' quilt as you go. Oh, yes. Um, and we've got some beautiful Devon fabrics um, and some brand new fabrics in there as well. So then 9 a.m., Jenny Smith's Pinafore is back. So we're very aware that on the 5th of February, when she was on with John, it sold out in seconds. So we've brought more and we've got a twist on how to make this fabulous Pinafore. And uh, then 10 a.m., we've got Designs by Tanya Wheel in her stunning book with a little something for everyone in there. And we're going to uh, take a look at a couple of the bags from that book. But there's dressmaking in there, stuff for the kids. There's all sorts. It's an all round fabulous book. And then 11 a.m., we've got some freestyle machine embroidery. So, a complete mix today. Uh, Jenny's back with that, with some Mother's Day gifting ideas with a little bit of liberty. What's not to love? Uh, now, we would love to hear from you. So, if you've made it up this bright and early on this Saturday morning, firstly, thank you very much. Secondly, oh, you know, good on you. Uh, and Here's how you would get in touch. So head to the website, which is sewingquarter.com. Click on the watch bit, and then we will come up. Ta-da! And then down to the bottom right-hand side is message the studio. Now, that's a bit like tweeting. There are a certain number of words that you can put on there. So if you've got a quick little message for us or a quick question, there's the place to do that. And then underneath are products from today's shows. So that's all yesterday's. That's about to be wiped. And we're about to start afresh. Now, of course, if you've got lots to say, if you're a bit like me, then email us, which is studio at sewingquarter.com. And also... Maybe you've already made some of the quilts as you go. Maybe you've already made uh, Jenny's penny. In which case, we would love to see your makes. So that's how you would also send us your pictures as well, because we love to see them. And we are kind of assuming that if, if you email in your pictures, it's okay to show them on it. Yeah. Now, we are quilting as you go today. Today, we've got the Savvy Stripes. Uh, and we've got it in Devon County fabric. So it's giving us that beautiful yesteryear feel in those lovely purples and greens. Producer Hannah would be very happy about this when we had the Devon fabrics on two days ago. She was like, no, those greens and those purples. So very, very lovely. It's gonna fit into a lot of your homes absolutely beautifully. Gorgeous colorways. And we've put that in a kit for you. So. If you are new to Quilt As You Go, this is a brilliant starter one because um, it is just straight lines. We're going to see that in just one moment. Uh, this is an 80-20 wadding here. So it all, this one is slightly different to the other Quilt As You Go because it is in one big piece. You don't cut it down. So it's one big piece and you're getting four and a half meters of fabric. So let's have a look at what we're getting. So in your Devon County, the names don't really, you know, you wouldn't go sort of green squirrel or anything. They're all given human names as to the people that have helped put this collection together. So we've got this one and you're getting, uh, oh, so William. There you go, that's William. This is Lois. And then Audrey. So William, Lois and Audrey, they are your Devon meter, uh, De Devon meter? Devon County fabrics by the half meter there, half of those. And then we've also put in half a meter of the purple and then two and a half of the ivory. So we've gone for the soft tones here. Very beautiful, very lovely. And of course your thread in there as well. And that is everything that you need. So that's 64, 49. And this is what you can create with it. Beautiful, really beautiful. Now, Janice made that. Yeah, that's her first ever quilt, which makes it very, very achievable for everybody. So if you have a sewing machine, you can do this. Uh, here we go. This is the next one. So this has got new fabric in it. We like a bit of new fabric. And it's from the Katie Jane collection. So $54.99, and you get, as ever, you get your quilt as you go in there. And then this is the new fabric. Isn't it pretty? This is your Katie Jane fabric from Macawa, and then we've found, look at that, our spot on, which goes beautifully. So this is a cooler shaded tonal one, and then we've got our blue spray time in there, and then you get three meters of the um, ivory, 
Oh, antique white. Sorry, antique white in that one. It's ivory in that one, isn't it? Uh, there we go. So that is how your four and a half meters is breaking down in those. Very pretty. So if blues are the colors that are in your house, maybe that's the one. Now, maybe you want a slightly more masculine feel, or you, maybe you just love, like me, Tim Holtz fabric and can't get enough. So this is your Tim Holtz option. Again, you've got your 80-20 wadding here with your quilt as you go express. And then look, this is your cigar box, Tim Holtz fabric. If you've never worked with Tim Holtz fabric before, it just is wonderful. The colors, the richness, richness the depth of the color, and the, the distress look that he manages to get within the fabric is just wonderful. So we had to find a color to go with it, and we went with the burgundy linen look fabric. And then we've also picked out, there's a little sort of bit of turquoise greeny bit in there. So we've managed to find that and put in different textures in here for you. So we've got that in your teal, and that's your linear. And then you've got gold. Very appropriate in Winter Olympics week. And then two and a half meters of your latte there, and that's 58.49. Fabulous. That's everything with your thread, the lot. Now, if you do just want the Savvy Stripes, maybe you bought some of the Tula fabric or something and you're looking for something brand new to do, then why not get going on this? Now, we're quite limited on these because obviously lots have gone into kits. So we're limited on how many of these we have by themselves, but $17.99 and all of your placement lines are all printed on there, ready to go. So if you want that just by itself and you've got your fabric that you want to add, or maybe you've, you know, you've got an idea of what ones you want to get off the website, then that's the one. Now, the Devon County one is the one that we're going to have behind us. So let's give you the details for that and go and say hello to Janice. Hello, Miss Hello, Janice. How are you, my love? <laughs> Lovely. Two days in a row. What a treat. I know. Really enjoyed it. Ah, oh, but doing this. Ah. Oh. Now, I hang on a minute. so pleased. This is your I first ever so quilt. Pleased, yes. And I'd always wanted to get into quilting and make one. And really? Yeah. And I thought, yes. But it was a lovely beginning one to Good. do. And from now on, I thought, oh. You got the bug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was lovely. In the shop, I used to do baby quilts out of the baby rompers that yes. people wanted. But nothing like this. So I, I did have a few goes at the, do you know what I mean? So I, kn I knew I was pretty capable, if you know what I mean. If I didn't think, I wouldn't have done it. But you didn't even need to be capable because well, it this was such is an it. easy project. Now, uh, oh, you know, if so you exciting. are brand new to quilting, then this is a fabulous one to start with. It because it's not wonderful. too huge. You can get no. it under your machine as well. Yeah. Um, Janice's background is dressmaking, as a lot of you know. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's uh, that has been your trade yeah. for many years. Um, now, yeah, obviously, an accountant as well, you know, yeah. Wonder Woman. Um, so to be able to make this as a first quilt, quilt. fabulous. Now, obviously, yeah. you have many years of sewing experience. Yeah. But as a lot of you know, and a lot of you do comment, you know, like, I'm a dressmaker. But actually, having watched the show, is a little bit tempted yes. to give quilting a go. Give and what I go. would say is, you know, there are two schools give of thought, are there? They're either, you know, dive straight yeah. in and, you know, yeah. you pick out the most complicated thing you've ever seen in your entire but life no, and just go for it. Or... Simple. Build you yourself build, yourself build yourself up, up and you get your confidence. Yeah. People learn in two very different yes. ways. It's like Jennifer Taylor, the very first dress she yeah. ever made was in fact her wedding dress. Yes. <laughs> you know, so you know, so there are two <laughs> different uh, schools of thought. Fandom. You know, whereas I would possibly, yeah. you know, start with start yeah, with easy. <laughs> so where do but we no. start with this, well, Janice? Uh, as soon as I thought about it, I thought when I opened the actual in instructions, because on the inside you get the instructions. Yes, you do all I thought, with right, it. Right, where do I start? And I thought, logically. Like bookkeeping and accounting, I thought, right, that's it. Start at the beginning. So, Very what you do, <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, what you have, there's 13 stripes to right. this one. So, what you have on there, you have all the numbers and the widths of the stripes that you need. So, the numbers are the order in which they in which go, they're gonna go onto, onto the, the quilt. quilt, which I will show you in a bit with the batting and everything. So what I did first, I got my fabrics and I decided the order right. in which I was going to do my pattern. And I was going, da, 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 moving it over, da, 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 moving it over to get the pattern right. And then I saw this and I thought, oh my word. So on, if you, if you can come into this, you've got like piece one is five and then you've got a dash and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, the five is five inches. Right. The half is the seam. 
that you're going to do. So you cut it in a five so and a half inch strip. In a five inch and a half inch strip. And you've got piece two is two plus the half. Mm -hmm. Three is three plus the half, four plus eight and a half. So that's what I did. I then cut them into the strips. Okay. So that's what I did. And then I actually numbered each one. So I and knew it's also exactly <laughs> what I was doing. So these all these these refer back. So where yeah. piece number 13 is down here, you that's know it. that piece number 13 down here is going to be a half. three and a half inch strip. So it's all it's so it's so clearly set up. That's 13 and then down here, piece if I just move that up a little bit there, is, three is your half. piece 13. And that's three and a half inches. So very, very clear. Ever so clear. And Ever I like so clear. that you've you've reinforced for yourself where yes. you're going to put it. So there's yeah. no room for error or confusion. Well, that's it. You see, get your pattern right. Yes. Because otherwise, you can end up with two creams together, and and I'm I have to be like that, a bit methodical. So that's how I did it. Perfect. So if you if you do that, you can't be wrong. Now also here. They will always give you, with Quilt As You Go, they will always give you a website where you can go and watch their own videos as well. So obviously watch back yes. this show, but there's also a video demonstration with each of the yes. Quilts As You Go. So whichever one you're buying, you know, you'll always have that and reassurance. And I that as well. Did I you? I did use that video as yeah. well, just to make sure, just to confirm that I was But that, you know, right. that's like our viewers yeah. watching back. This is it's, it's reassure, it's reassuring, yes. isn't it? So, so when we've doing. cut out our strips, what yeah, do we got do the strips, next? Janice. So... Got our so the next thing you do, if I can just pop them over to there, whoops, you attach your batting, what's the actual quilt as you go express, to the fabric okay. on the back. Whoops, that's it. So you in your kit you've got the cream. Now if you look, I've got it because yeah. I'm only showing so much. So you just attach the back in, and I've used my quilting pins now, or wonder clips. To this is the it. next point so this to, is the next point to mention. So this is a 40 by 60, uh, 50, 40 by 50 inch quilt. Um, now, when you the, some of the other quilts as you go, the polyester quilts as you go that you might have seen before on the show have an adhesive backing. Yes. The whole um, idea of quilt as you go is is literally that yes. as you stitch on the top, you've got the backing already in place, yes. so it is already quilting. It's already so it's not quilting. that nerve wracking thing yeah. of having spent hours and hours and hours of making this beautiful patchwork and then yeah. <gasps> am I going to be all right be all doing right that? End. Oh, Devon County, apparently, you do have to start checking out, by the way, quick message there. So um, the thing to mention with this is that um, this is an 80-20, so it's, yeah. it's predominantly cotton. And none of the 80-20 range that Quilters You Go do have that adhesive backing yeah. on the back. So either, like Janice, use your quilting pins or... I've got your 404 repositionable basting spray, spray. Uh, which is, and somebody asked the other day um, on the fan page, how would you, how would you go about yes. using it? Now, what I would say is um, lay the wadding down and then put your backing over the oh, top, yes. then peel back a little bit, little bit of spray, and then smooth it on and then peel back a bit more, I smooth it on. Well, no, we didn't give it to you. No, so, oh, you yeah. have anyway. Oh, yeah. There you go. Know, it? It? But it's <laughs> options, isn't it? But it is <laughs> your options. You know, quilting know. pins is another, another way yeah. to go. We've got the quilting pins on the website. We've got the repositionable spray. The beauty of the repositionable spray, lovely. it's not, uh, this one, it, it will be permanent after mm. sort of half an hour. But until then, um, you know, what you've got there is you've got that chance to get yeah. it right and lay it where you want it to be. There you go. So that's seven ninety nine. And the other thing I must stress as well, because you can't press the batting, yes. make sure, I made sure that with me and my pressing, I pressed this before I attached the back. So, yes. do you know what I mean? So it's all straight and lovely and not creased up. Well, let's talk about so. the pressing then, because there is that bit of prep before you start yes. with the quilts as you go. And this is for all of them. Yeah, I've got there to do go. this. I have got to do this on each part before I actually do it. Oh, we're not done yet. Shall I turn no, there we go, the iron's on. So this, these fabrics have got to be stiffened because the, with this spray starch, because what you do, because this can't be pressed, as you're pressing it open with your fingers and your hands, if it's stiff, it, yes. it holds better. So make sure that each piece is 
it you means can, you can yeah, finger press it. Can, yeah, and that's a wonderful spray. I've never used that before either. So, so that's your lavender that one, and I'll, well. I'll give these a spray, and I'll, I'll do a bit yeah. of spraying and pressing for you, and we <laughs> can get lovely. going. So what so number are we up to we'll here? To number eight next, which okay. is the blue. Uh-huh. So, and if you look there, Does that that's need pressing and spraying? So this needs pressing and spraying. All right, Janice, I can do that. So, <laughs> you do my pressing yesterday, yeah, wasn't well, you? Yeah, well, you know, here to so, help. If you can just press, press that the smell of it. So I'm always happy to use the best <laughs> press. <laughs> nice. If you there do you that. Go. Okay. Now, they are a bit wide. I've, I've done them as wide as the fabric, so, but... Um, they, they normally cut, you can normally cut them down to 40 inches wide. Yes. But um, I'm quite happy just to, you know, just pin them on No, actually, way. do you know what? We've never actually used the best press, um, best press spray on air. Um, and I'm really pleased that we are, actually, because it's, what it isn't is flaky and white, like a lot of the aerosol starch sprays. It yeah. smells wonderful. And, look, you know, you, you just you get so much in a bottle, it's not That's going good. up your nose which is another nice thing, but it does do a fab job. So if we just open it out to where I got to, so then if I just do this while you're doing that. Janice, how long did this take you to do? Um, a few hours, a okay. few hours. But which for a first not, ever quilt, it's you pretty know, impressive. It was great. I, was, I was really, I loved it. I did, I loved this. I loved doing it and I kept doing this. <laughs> I did, I loved it. Just stroking Because that's it. ever so soft. Yeah. Well, it so, is actually. I think 80-20 I think is probably one of my favourite. And in carpets, because I come from a family background to carpet, you always have to Do you? Yeah, my family owned a bit of carpet. So, so but um, with carpet, you always have to have 80-20 because of the wear. There you go. You learn something new every day. But it's a school day. 20% nine. <laughs> there we go. So what you do then... Pin it face right sides together. Yeah. And what you do, sorry, I'm not explaining myself properly. That's right. Um, you pin it to the edge of the strip right sides together. Mm -hmm. So that when you're going to turn it, it's like. Yes. So. And then what you do, you pin through all the layers. All the Shall I have a pin down this so end? So if we do that. I'll I'll pin down here, you pin up there. That's it. You, whoops. Same machine over a bit. So if I pin it from here. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is as well, what I did find, this is where my seam ripper came in. You know my seam ripper? I you and your seam machine. ripper, Janice. Yeah, well, this, I, I used it ever such a lot doing this. Look, what, to, because because you went wrong? No, or? just the no? puckery. Just to make sure that this... Pressed lovely and straight. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because you just want to make sure that it's dead go. straight. Sorry, Natasha. That, no, that's all right. In that case, we, we sh you should pin and just keep going. Down. There you go. That, that should be... Now, we've had a message from Lorraine in Cambridge here. It says, I always roll the top layer of the quilt up start at the top and then spray a small layer of wadding and then smooth out um, the centre outwards um, with flat of... I'm going to say potentially your hand, but it cut off, yeah. but the oh, message right. cut off. So this is it. You know, lots of people have, have different, different ways, ways of doing things. There's no right or wrong way. That's a great way of doing it. Thank you, Lorraine, for sharing that. Now, this line that we're pinning up to is your placement line. Yes. So it's, it's not like yes. foundation paper piecing where you then sew yes. on the line. You're so a, a quarter line. of an inch and then we're away a from that. Away from. There, that's it. So, oh, oh, there's a pin on there. Sorry, I left a pin. That's my fault. Um, if so you are new to quilting, this is just straight lines. This yeah, is the beauty of this. Lovely. And that now this is where. So the effect over here, and it's just lovely. And what I think is so beautiful about this is that if you have fabrics that you absolutely love and you really want to get the full effect of the fabrics, this is possibly the quilt for you because you do really get to enjoy that. And maybe if you're buying the quilt by itself and you've got some of the... Hey, oh, could you imagine this with, you know, with all sorts of, of different fabrics. If you've got larger prints, then you can actually get some of those pattern repeats in there as well. So the Devon County gives you the lovely soft tones there for 64.49. Oh, um, OIGC66 is your code there. So for that, you have to take the waist as well. So I'm just sewing down a quarter of an inch. 
There we go. Lift it up. Over. It's just a bit awkward, isn't it? This. There's, there you go. There's a little bit of fabric there now, isn't there? But this isn't because this is 40 by 50 inches. It's not so big that you're not going to manage to get it no. under any domestic machine. Because that's the other it's, thing that people yeah, worry about is the actual quilting of a large quilt. Like, oh, am I actually going to fit it under my machine? And that's where quilts, as you go, win every single time. I thought it was lovely. I love doing it. Really enjoyed doing it. But any of the projects I love doing anyway, so... No. You just love a bit of sewing, don't you? I do. <laughs> now, lots of you joining us this morning are new. Good morning. And if you are new morning, uh, and you are making your first purchase today, because we've not been long on Sky now, Janice, you see. Not, not I know. long at all. So if you are just joining us for the first time and you are spending over £10, not including a P&P today, then we will just, you know, throw in with your order this self-healing cutting mat, which probably you can't see. There you go. That's easier to see, isn't it, there? Uh, oh, hello, Tina. Tina in Wiltshire says, loving your pinafore, Tash. Got my pattern um, ready to, hang on, ready to, yeah, ready to make one. Off to London today, so on record for Jenny's hour, says Tina. Thank you. Aww. This is the next hour. This is the pinafore. This is the, she, the one that she made last time. But on the next hour, she's going to show you how to take this exact same pattern and make it into a dress. Lovely. Look, ladies, it? So if you did miss out on that packet last time, pattern last time, why's on Tina on getting in quick? Because they went super fast. We wore pinafores when we were growing up when, uh, a few years ago. And then I seemed to get a fashion. <laughs> when we were growing up, a couple of years ago. A few years ago. Yeah. And yeah. then I seemed to get a fashion, but now they're back and it's great. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> it is, it's one of those things that I just, I, they, I feel really comfortable in. I love seeing children in them as well. Yeah. Like girls in pinafores. Oh. <laughs> so Janice, this is all coming together so. a treat. So then, take your pins out, wind the Tasha's spray. <laughs> Having a little spray. Tell you what, the studio's going to smell lovely, Janice, with my best breath. I know. I must admit, though, um, with that, the smell as well, it, I was in like a little space, and it, the smell sometimes got to me a bit. <laughs> and I thought, so keep your, make sure you do it in a bit of a... A bigger area. Do you know what? We do, um, we do it without a scent as well. Oh, really? So if you do, no, if you do, that's a very good point to make. If you are in a smaller area, I see my mum doesn't like scented things on fabric, so she'd go for the scent free. It's all yeah. personal taste, whereas I love the smell of the lavender, and so I'm like, yeah. And actually, also the cotton, oh, the cotton was, fresh one as well. That one hasn't took a bit there. I was a bit worried about that bit there, so I'm just going to machine that down. So, and the beauty of it is, if you do miss a bit, you can just, just go, go down, back in. it doesn't make yeah. a lot of difference. This isn't, this, so. you know, with, with some quilting, it is absolute accuracy, you know, to get perfect points and everything else. But, and if that intimidates you a little bit, then go for this one, because it, it really is, it's a lovely beginner's one. Really lovely. And I am a beginner on this, trust me. <laughs> Now, we've got Hopefully various different good. designs for you today. The Devon County is the one behind, and the one that we're working with, with all these beautiful tones of blue, is the Katie Jane, which is the one down the bottom. So lots of you have got the Devon County in your baskets. Um, at least four of you need to check out. Because, and that's, well, we are limited on all of them, so um, please do check out. That's better. I'm happy now. You're yeah, happy, Janice. Well, on, this, on some of the small ones, if you don't cut it dead accurate, you you know it can go a bit off. So you just got, the accuracy is the key. There you go, Janice. <laughs> this is the next one. Right, lovely. So this is next. Well, no, because look, this 10. is how organised Janice was this morning. She's got all of them with numbers on. <laughs> so I know next one is up there, number ten. <laughs> and the last one is number twelve. So. The way, the way this is put together I mean, with, is you'd normally do well, if middle busy, one and then well, one if you're side, a busy one side. Mom, but this is, you can do it this way. Well, if you're a busy mum and you're doing this, yeah. and then you've got to suddenly think, oh, I've got to go and get the kids from school. Yeah, you, then you've got everything you, marked you out. You can mark it. It's marked. And you can leave it. Go and have a cup of tea. Or, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, or if your favourite programme comes on telly, like the sewing floor, so you can just... <laughs> yeah, no, you, you can get involved. Uh, the really <laughs> getting Hamish, she says, best way to start quilting, um, 
It's quilt as you go. Yeah. I love my London labyrinth. Ah, oh, yeah, Lorraine. Can you send us a photo, Lorraine? Have you finished it? Can we have a look? All pictures. Very nosy. We want I do all love pictures, to see don't we? Everybody's makes. Now, before you move on. Yeah. Um, well, I'll leave you to pin. Yeah. And I'm going to go, because you can't okay, do number you 12 on. until I've pressed it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go look at some fabrics. <laughs> Quick twirl of my pinny. Now, your Devon County needs to check out. So let's have a little look, shall we? So um, this is your Devon County. This comes with it. So you've got your wadding in there already. 80, 20, lovely cotton polyester mix. The 80% is the cotton, by the way. The polyester just helps it all hold together beautifully. Now, here's your thread. You get your thread as well. Now, this one is William. So with the, um, with the Devon County fabrics, they... Um, the inspiration was taken from antique sort of Victorian, Edwardian fabrics and, uh, and, and it was, the inspiration was taken from uh, the Mariner's quilt, which is beautiful. And so these fabrics are all named after either people who made up the Mariner's quilt in the first place or those people that helped this collection come to fruition. So this one is William. This one is Lois. And then this one is ooh, Audrey. That's it. Audie, Audrey. And so you get half a meter of each of those Devon County fabrics. And we were very, there, there were lots of different colorways throughout the Devon County range. And, but I think that mixing these greens and the purples through is just beautiful. And then you've got a meter of your purple. And then the rest of the kit is made up with your ivory fabric there. And that's 64.49. So that's going to be your backing fabric there. 64.49. And this is what you can be making. The colors are just gorgeous. So a lovely way to showcase your fabrics. Rather than just having a little snippet here, a little snippet there, you get that great swathe of beautifulness. Uh, right, now the cigar box is next. Tim Holtz. Beautiful Tim Holtz fabric. So again, you're going to get your quilt as you go in there as well. Now, this is your Tim Holtz. Let me show you because I'm going to actually unfold this. The detailing in here is exquisite. And you get an idea. It's a lovely, warm, warm colorway. It's going to look great, isn't it? Really, really lovely. Uh, what Tim Holtz managed, he comes actually from a paper background, a, a paper making background. And, um, and so he, he manages to get beautiful distressed papers. And he also uh, is very well renowned for his distress inks. But what he's managed to do with his fabrics is get that distressed look into the fabrics, which is just fabulous. Um, and it's all 100% cotton, by the way. All of the fabrics this morning, 100% cotton. Um, and so then, of course, we had to find a nice sort of burgundy color that would go with it. And here it is. And this is linen look, so you've got texture within here as well. I think this would look lovely hung over a, um, over a leather sofa or something. Then you've got your teal there and your linear. Then you've got gold, which of course is picking up the gold in the fabric there. And then you've got your, was it latte or cappuccino? Latte. And then the last option is the one that Janice is working with today and has one of our brand new fabrics in from the, here we go, Katie Jane Rage. So, and the Katie Jane Rage is, is lots of different florals, very pretty, shabby chic type florals. And I love the different um, sort of turquoises in there. So that's your 54.99, half a meter. And then you've got the lovely spot on there. And the spray time, which we've just seen be uh, sewed down. Lovely. And then down here, you've got your antique white. You do need to start checking out your baskets. But this is great because you're not having to worry about, have I got enough fabric? You, it's all in there. You've even got the thread. So you are all good to go. So Janice, you've got another, 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 strip, on another go. strip to have a good so go I'm at. I'm just going to machine this one. OK. So. It is a bit boring to watch, isn't it, this, this one, but the effect, the quilt up there, the, the range that I made, it, it doesn't show on camera absolutely how beautiful it is. Oh. It's so rich looking. The fabric's so rich looking. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely really beautiful. beautiful. I, lo I just really like purple and green together. I think it's an un underused but winning combination. I love green. Yeah. It's my favourite it, colour. It's a, it's, it feels very peaceful, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, um, 
Another thing to mention we've got on the show today are the magic clips. Now, um, we're not at a stage to use them yet, but when you come to do your binding, this is a great way to hold everything in place. So these are 15 99 and it just means you don't have to take your pins out. You can, the edge of your foot can run over there and then you don't have to take them out as you go. So that's 15.99 PFEQ84. There you go, there's producer Hannah having a sew with those. And you see the edge of the foot just gliding over the edge, the edge of the foot there. Obviously the needle has to be to the right of the foot. You don't put your needle through there. Full instructions on the back of your packet, but it just means that you don't have to take pins or clips out as you go. Janice, I'm going to spray starch your next one. Okay. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> it is like a production line, isn't it? Doing this in a jiffy. <laughs> Tell you what, though, you know, if you've got an, if you've got a friend that you know you you both both fancy starting having a go, yeah, you could you it. could have a go together, couldn't you? You could honestly have a, do it in an afternoon with a nice glass of wine. With a glass of wine in the afternoon? Well, yes. no, if you had a nice a, a friend round and you made an afternoon of it, yes. or co a coffee morning or something, you could make one of these in the morning. I was thinking tea and cake. You know, or tea and cake. It's what they take, your fancy. You know, <laughs> you think I'd I noticed that your, well, your wine day. drinking's now turned into the morning, Janice. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't drink wine. I'm but you don't even drink it? <laughs> no, I'm allergic to yeast, so I don't. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes, I don't drink wine. I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> so you used to yeah. wine, I thought it was beer. I like that. I believe it or not, I like vodka. I like a vodka. You like a vodka? But do I don't, you? I don't, I'm not a... I'm You're not, not a big drinker, are you? No. no. I'm more of a cake kind of a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cake and chocolate. Cake and chocolates. Oh, no, I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> well, it's because I'm still... St oh, hang on. You're starting straight. your fabrics over here. Again, this one's not going quite there, so I'm going to just buy Natasha's finishing spray. I'm just going to. Produce Paul's just saying, Janice, that for your first quilt, he thinks you've done brilliantly. And Thank that's, you, that's the thing, isn't it? it it's, it's that sense of achievement that actually I made that. I know. Brilliant. I'm dead chuffed. <laughs> we, had, um, we had one done out of Tilda fabrics, and um, when we had the westerly rulers on, um, Angie went in with, with some of the plain strips and westerly ruler and made, really made a feature of extra quilting yes. in those strips. So there's, you know, there's another thing. Maybe it's not that this is going to be one of your first quilts. Maybe it's actually you've got something like your westerlies that you want to have a play with and you want to just have a go with, with a little bit of extra quilting but not needing to do the whole thing, which can be a little bit daunting. So there's lots of reasons, and really, to go with this. And what's so nice about the sewing shows? The sewing show. We've needed one for years. And because, here we are, Janice. Because here you we can are. get demonstrations of yes. doing this and people don't get so frightened. No, no. And that's what it's all about. People having a go. Absolutely. And then you know what you can do and what your capabilities are. Now we've got 20 minutes, Janice. Oh, have we? We've got lots of time. Oh, yes. We're okay because I think this is the last strip. It is. It is. <laughs> and then it comes so, down to the binding. And then we come down to the binding. So, go through all the thicknesses again. Try and do... Now, Janice, does your binding need a press as well? You could do. I, I have Shall done I? it and pressed it, but um, it's always it another needs quick. another press. <laughs> Janice, queen of can pressing never press you enough. off. Can never press enough. Oh, this. Beautiful. So well, you've done I'm, a scrappy binding, which on, is nice. on that one, I did the back all plain yeah. with the purple. On this one, I was getting a bit adventurous then. Hey, so, but then you, you see, perfect. So <laughs> did one exactly as it said, and then second one got your confidence up. And then up, the went, second one, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to try and be a bit clever here with the scraps of fabric. Hey. But she's gone, she's gone rogue. I've tried to make sure that the, sh the fabric short ends are at the top and the big white strips on the sides. Oh, really? So I've done it that way? I've tried to do it that way. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I had to go. <laughs> That's the main thing. Oh, so. gosh. Um, producer Paul says, it's Tash. <laughs> I know it's only half past eight in the morning, but there are seven of you with the Devon County in your baskets, and we don't have, uh, we don't have oodles of it. We don't want you to miss out. So, you know, start your day off the right way and make sure that you don't miss out. Could you imagine? That would ruin your whole day, wouldn't it? <laughs> if, you, if you had your heart set on something and didn't get it because, you know, you'd gone off to make a quick cup of tea and a bacon sarnie and missed out. <laughs> no. So if you are one of those 
and you've got it in your basket and you've got your heart set on it because it is gorgeous fabrics. And this is actually a really lovely way to get a bit of, a bit of quality, gorgeous fabric in your life and get that Devon County. Mm, just whizzing down. Oh, Sarah's messaging and made a very good point. Sarah, sorry, messaging and made a very good point. Which is always wanted to try a quilt, but it's always been the finish of putting the wadding on that's put me off. Yes, Sarah, you are absolutely right. That's where quilt as you go wins hand down. And I remember when we started the channel, we did have a conversation as to, you know, are our, are our avid quilters going to want to quilt as you go? And and. You know, the, the ladies from the magazines, our, our magazines, they were like, oh, well, I don't know. And uh, we thought, well, do you know what? Yes, because not everybody has, has a, 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 a swanky machine with lots of space to be able to quilt. And, you know, if you've gone through making that beautiful patchwork top, it, it can be really daunting. You spend yeah. hours and hours and hours putting it together. Uh, but then equally, sending a quilt off to be long arm quilting soon racks up the money. So, you know, you're looking at sort of £150 a time to get, to get a, a large size quilt, long arm quilted. So actually, to be able to do it like this, and with some of the other quilts as you go, you know, you, you're only quilting... 12, 14 yeah. inches at a time. That's the, that's the maximum size that you would quilt. This is unusual for quilts as you go, because this is actually a large one. This is 40 by 60 inches, but still really manageable, really manageable. to get through the machine because you're working from the center out. So actually you're only gonna have, yes. uh, hang on, 25 inches under it at, at the very, very maximum. Helen in Her uh, Herefordshire. Helen in Herefordshire, where hurricanes Hello. hardly ever happen. <laughs> says, morning ladies. If Morning. you worry about binding, cut the backing fabric one inch wider and fold over the top and sew instead, says Helen. I love doing that, Helen. I'm so with you on We're that. Gonna, I'm going to do something like that, I think. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's options, isn't it? It is. The other thing that I've been known to do is to then put my backing over the front, stitch around, turn it through. Yeah. That's the other way. That's the other There's way. all sorts of different ways. Um, and, and that's the joy of it. Everyone will, will find you uh, different ways different and, have, ways and different it. ideas. And it's great. It is. It's really Which means there can be no quilting. Well, please. I'm going to keep picking up tips now. I know that. So what I do now is I yes. take the actual pin out yes. from the edges and I actually just pin it, put the pin in the quilt. And it, it's got to be good because my other half, when I was doing this, he said, what are you making? And he said, you can make us one of them. Oh, well, that's the seal of approval, isn't it? And when that, your other half actually oh, says we so want it in the house. But you've got to understand my other it's half. It's like the royal stamp. Well, my other half's an ex-builder, so you can imagine what he's like. <laughs> well, I, I would imagine so, he would want it constructed perfectly so, <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what he said. Is he, he watching this morning? One? I don't know, probably. Morning, Martin. Hope you been better. <laughs> He'll probably be watching a bit of it. So, but, yeah, so that's what he said. He said he quite well, wasn't he? Because of how quick it was. Ah. As well, it, I think he was shocked how quick it came together, you know, because <laughs> when I'm sewing like bags and dresses, I, that can oh, take can, some time, yeah. can't I? So he was quite impressed he with this. He can lose you for days, yeah. can't he, Janice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was quite impressed with this one. So then all we do then is pin it like I have all the way round, and then you trim it to the actual edge of the... Well, I, I just leave a bit anyway. So you just trim it all off the mm -hmm. sides and try and follow the where the line is. Now, and that's what this is something that you will very rarely see. Now, because you have come from dressmaking, yeah. you go in with the scissors, you don't rotary cut, do you? Sorry? You go in with the scissors, don't you? You don't rotary cut, do I you? I don't do that. No, then this is, and this is it, because I know that that puts a lot of dressmakers off quilting, that I they tried. think they've only I've ever got to rotary, rotary cut. cut. So I just can't. There's always a way. I'll cut my finger. Okay. There you go. <laughs> oh, There's no, always I'm a, scissors, a way. I'm a scissors girl. Now it says after the piecing is complete and any additional quilt stitching is done, mark out and cut the sides flush with the printed edge. That's it. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, nice clear instructions. So, yeah, uh, yeah the rotary cutter, I've never really persevered with it since I cut myself with it. So, it would only take something like that. But, and then that would mean that the whole world of quilting, Janice, was shut to you. I know. But now, because I've done this as my first quilt, and it didn't really give it a go. I'll do a lot of sewing. I'm going to start being a bit more adventurous myself. It's, it's your comfort zone, isn't it? it? Is and I would hate zone. to have thought that you would never have given quilting a go um, 
because of those because, because of a road trip hazard. But it's so true. It is what sometimes Pop, puts people off. off. Yeah. It's very, very true. And, uh, and so, you know, this is something that you can do, as Janice has, with a pair of scissors. Both of these have been done with a pair of scissors. <laughs> it's unusual, but not impossible. <laughs> the quilters would be going... <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what, Janice, this is, this is about making... Um, something accessible I'll for everyone. And as far as I'm concerned, oh, I concerned, as soon as somebody has a go, that's it. That's you know, the horse is always going to be the purest, and they're always going to be the perfectionists, and that's wonderful. But actually, I would rather that people had the satisfaction of making something and having that pride that, that they is. made something and had a go. And that's it's all good. true. Now, there we go. Excellent. So then what we've got to do then mm -hmm. is add the binding strip. So hopefully, mm -hmm. have I done this right? I probably haven't done this right, you know. Well, again, Janice, there's no right <laughs> or wrong matter. with it because the nice thing about a scrappy quilt is that you get a hint of the fabrics all the way around. So you don't have to have sort of the cream all the way down there or anything. It can just, I like it when it's a little bit mishmash all the way around. Well, people can work this out, can't they? Yeah, but <laughs> so they can do it, and also they can use up so whatever they have, and that's the joy of a, of a scrappy of a binding. Scrappy mind. So now, with the binding here, so it with does the binding give you instructions. Here, what it does, it does say, um, now this is where I went onto the website. Okay. Because they've got on their website basics of putting binding on. Right. So um, because I was unsure on the quilt to how you do the dress bindings, I was thinking about the mitered edges and things like that. And what they did was quite clever. Now, you probably all know this, but I didn't at the time. So you have to leave three inches on the end. Yeah. And that's where you're going to finish. Yeah. So three inches. I haven't got a tape measure here, have I? I knew I'd forget something. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting that. Cause I don't... Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's got some bad stuff on. So the three inches there is there. Mm -hmm. Put that to the end. Now, this is where you use your smaller pins. Or your magic clips. It's up or to your you. magic clips, as you said. So now I'm going to take these bigger pins out. Or you can leave them in if you put them in a different way, but I had to take it out because it was in the way. So put your binding on. Now, what you do, you do the binding two and a half inches. Yes. Fold it in half, all yes. edges together. Yes. And you actually, I wondered whether you'd do that and fold it over, but you don't. You use the both edges. Mm -hmm. both so all edges, the raw all edges the raw go along edges that edge. go along this edge here. Okay. Uh, Geraldine, so. you, are, you are reading my mind. Geraldine says, hi, ladies. Janice, use a creative grid ruler as you will be fine with a rotary cutter. Use, uh, use the quilter's oh, gloves right. as well. Uh, oh. Love you both, says Geraldine. Geraldine, you are so right. And I know that Geraldine is um, a, 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 a an active um, creative grids user. She, she's, oh, really? she's got one or two. Right, three or on four. the next show, if I do um, the quilt again, I'll But this is it. Use it. <laughs> At the very, very start of the channel, Lucy yeah. Brennan um, sat me down with a Creative Grids ruler because I would my, my fear, I had a big fear of rotary cutters too, so I completely yeah. understand where you're coming from with that because, nice. again, I'd slipped and I'd cut the wrong bit of fabric and I'd wasted fabric, which I hate. Luckily, yes. I hadn't cut myself, but, you know, and, and wasted fabric. And as soon as I went on to Creative Grids ruler, because I got an in, a, inbuilt grip, Yes. It, it gives it you that security. Yeah. And now, love it. Oh, nice. Absolutely love it. So that's one nothing thing I'm going to have to buy. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've got a load of you. <laughs> You've got a I list, have I've you? got a list of such Janice a said to me this morning, she said, as soon as I get paid for these shows, I'm going to go straight back to sewing yeah. quarter because I've got a list. I've got a list. You're on your sewing machine so everything, long. don't oh, you? Yeah, definitely. So... No, because these new things that are coming out, they're absolutely marvellous. But you see, this is it, Janet. So, I think that you are in the same situation. We've got nine minutes, by the way. Right. As, as a lot of our viewers, in that you have sewn for years. Yes, and, you and you've done it the way your mother taught yeah. you because she was a seamstress before you. And, it, and it's been one of those things that that's the way that you were taught, that's the way that you knew. And if yeah. you're not going back to college and you're not going into workshops and you're not doing anything like that, which you didn't need to do because you were making dresses and you're very comfortable in that, yeah. in that sphere, then why would you find out all I these know. different things? And that's where this channel is great. It's giving you these ideas. These you know, ideas. we have the haberdashery hours and the tools hours where we show you the new things that are out there and the new rulers and yeah. things like that. Because uh, things do move on a pace. It's beautiful. It is. It's really good. So I got to here and I thought, oh, damn. <laughs> Oh, damn, I thought. <laughs> I've got a corner. <laughs> I've got There's a corner. There's a corner. And I thought, uh, and it's not got folded over the binding, so what do I do? 
And what so, did you do? So what you did. Now, <laughs> I'm now I've got to remember this. So you fold it back and you fold it, you only sew, you sew down, but then you have to leave a quarter of an inch on the end. Right. Uh, so you sew all the way down and what they do, in fact, I'm going to do this, I'm going to sew the down. She's just going to do it. And that's each side, each corner, you have to leave a quarter of an inch. Okay. Now quilters are going to know this. <laughs> but Jenna, so, you know, this is it. You've dressed made for, for, I was going to say, for hundreds of years. That's very rude, isn't it? For, for, for a very long time. You look amazing for your age. 30, uh, 30 cushions. But, but for, for a year or two. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and that's the thing, isn't it, that the... I've got completely lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Made you sound know. like you were talking back in the Egyptian times or something. <laughs> um, now this, again, you've be seeing me, but I've done quite well today not using the see me, because yesterday I kept on to use it. But maybe I'm a bit more confident today than I was yesterday. Second book. Yeah. You see? And you do, you get more confident as the time goes on. So. And that's then when you can start bringing in, like Geraldine says, you know, bring in your quilters gloves. Quilters gloves will give you more quilters grip. Quilters gloves, I've never heard of that. Oh, so, okay, sometimes. It's, if, you're, if you're quilting, that you, you keep saying, that you, um, they're, they're just gloves that give you grip, so it stops any oh. hand fatigue. Because sometimes if, you, if you're quilting a huge amount, you can get a little bit achy on the hands. So they just help you with a bit of grip. Yeah. So um, we're coming up here and we're going to leave a quarter of an inch. Yeah, quarter of an inch. So I'll do it to the white. Yeah, why not? It's a good place to stop. That's it. So reverse stitch to strengthen. And you have to reverse stitch to strengthen it. Okay, as well. all right. So, yes, but again, this is all on that, the actual... Website. Can we take these pins out? Yeah. Would that help? Take the pins out. This is where the magnetic pin cushion comes in a tree, isn't it? Because you can just shove it and then just... just shove it. Okay. So then what you do, you fold it back. Yep. And then you go up like so. So you put it at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, 45 degree angle. Okay. 45 degree angle. I'll get the scissors with this. That's it. 45 degree angle. Yeah. And then you fold it back over. Right. And then you've got the straight edge there. And then there. you're just good to go again. And then you're just good to go again. So you put do your I pins start in there. from a quarter of an inch at the top? Yes. Or do I start from the top and just sew down? Well, just it's always a quarter of an inch machine down quarter. anyway. So what you do again? If we just show you again quickly. Fold it over, 45 degree angle. So it's like so. You fold it in, mm -hmm. like so. And your 45 then degree you line. Then you fold it back, and it's the edge to the edge. And then you stick two pins in here uh -huh. to hold it. Right. One there, one there. Mm -hmm. And you start again. Fabulous. Now, Sandra and Somerset. We're getting all, we've got Helen in Hertfordshire, or Herefordshire, and we've got Sandra and Somerset. Uh -huh. I love the alliteration this morning. She says, hi, the way I remember binding to the corners is to take it to the north, then back down to the south. Yeah. I love it. I love, everyone's got their ways of remembering. This is brilliant. It's like, it's like a workshop, yeah. one, isn't it? A group workshop. And you know what my family's motto has always been? What? There's no such word as can't. There you go. There you go. And that is what I'm always going to start saying on the sewing quarter. There's no such word as can't because you can do anything. There you go. And I've always thought that. Only, I always think women can do as anything just like men, but just the physical is where we can't do it. But everything else, no such word as can't. Can do it. Uh, we we've got a message it. from Amanda in <laughs> Berkshire. Oh, I guess I want to... Uh, oh, we're not pretentious from Airfordshire, Amanda from Airfordshire, so we okay. just keep up the, the alliteration. Um, I love your programme. <laughs> it's given me confidence to try sewing other things apart from cushion covers. Today, I'm trying quilt making. Yes. Amanda, I salute you. Good for you. I absolutely salute you. I started making cushions. It was yeah. my friend Fliss's fault. She and wanted to make a cushion for her boyfriend. Better, can't you? You can only get better. And an email from Jane as well. Oh, she goodness. says, hi, Tash and team. This was my first big quilt that fits on our king-size oh, bed. Didn't realise how, how, how big our bed is. But once <laughs> I had started, I had to finish. Great show again, says Jane. Thank you, Jane. 
There you go. You'll never be complaining. You don't have enough space. Now we've got three <laughs> minutes, Janice. So, so we're not going to get all the way down there. So, so do you want to start at the top? What they do, they, yep. what you do as well, is you machine it down. Yes. And then all you do then is you, you fold it over to the other side, and then you do fold the corners in, like a mitre. So, but it's ever so easy. So it'll be fine. Here we go. So, there it is. So that's it. Done. And then you hand and stitched, you hand didn't you? I you hand, hand stitched, stitched it all, all the way, way around. around there. So, because I'm a hand stitcher, as you know, as well. Love a good hand so stitcher. I do like Any a good excuse hand for a hand base or a hand do, stitch, isn't it, with you? By hand. So there we go. We've got a few minutes. You could start to have a little stitch of that, and then we could show that if we've got time. Nice. Um, do you need to start checking your baskets that says producer Paul, the word from above? Well, actually, sort of over there. Uh, it says, do you need to start checking out those baskets? 54.99 is the Katie Jane floral. That's that beautiful blues. We were saying today, tricky to decide which one to go for. I yeah. think it's got to go down with which colours you love, which is going to go with your house the best. Who are you making yeah. it for you making as well? Because this is a beautiful one to, you know, to make for someone as well. You know, and a very convenient Ooh, size. You can easy. snuggle under this one. One. It's a good one. Uh, it's a 54.99 for the Katie Jane floral. If you are after the Devon County, what a great excuse to get some Devon County gorgeous fabrics in your house. Then details down the bottom there, 64.49. So quickly. Oh, that's a good idea, Janice. Just do a little bit there. Do a bit on the end. Trim it down slightly so that you get a good fold. Fold it back like so and then you've got that so then you switch it around to the back switch it down to the back and then you just fold it hang on a second sorry i'm going to be all fingers and thumbs now <laughs> right so fold it in fold that in fold that down and then that goes and then you can stitch it and then you can stitch it and like with the seam ripper, you can just pull that corner out as much as you can. You and get just... your seam ripper in yeah. there somewhere <laughs> when you do it. all the time. So just pull that bit out and yep. then machine down there and away you go. Perfect, there we go. So just fold it in. for the Katie Jane. Thank you, Janice. Lovely. It's lovely to see you getting your confidence up with yeah. the quilts. Make your quilts, guys. <laughs> Brilliant. You're back in an hour. We're going to do some bags. bags. Yeah. Bags. Tanya Whelan so, bags. Oh, they're lovely. You've got a clutch yeah. and a nice... Big Shoulder. ones too. Yeah, lovely. Ooh, beautiful fabrics too. <laughs> they right, are thank beautiful. you, my love. Okay. Well done, thank and I'll you. See you later. See you all now. Later. I'm clutching this because this is the most cost effective way to get your best press. I'll always tell you, this is your most cost effective way. Uh, so if you know you're going to use the best press, quite frankly, I now spray everything. Um, this obviously you'll get a full one. We've used this quite a lot. We uh, and Mary Ellen, who makes it says um, that it makes ironing almost fun. That's a promise to you. 9.99 and uh, this will last and last and last. This is linen fresh. It has a lovely fresh fragrance to it and it's 9.99 FSEQ20. But if you are working with any of the quilts as you go, uh, then it really is something you need to add into your order. And this is the most cost effective way of doing it. So if you are, you know you're gonna be quilting, you know that you're gonna use your spray, then this is the great way of doing it. It doesn't leave any white marks. You saw there on those fabrics, no white marks, because it's not an aerosol, it's just a spray. So, you know, better for the environment, better for you as well. And uh, ch -ch -ch press, done, no white marks, lovely. That's why we stock it for you. FSEQ20 is your code there. Something else, producer Paul. Oh, the magic clips as well. So the magic clips mean uh, that you don't have to take them out as you sew. They, are, they lie flat in the fabric. So as you can see here, uh, producer Hannah's just sewn straight over her foot, her foot on her machine has, is gliding over the edge of those clips. Obviously you have to make sure that the needle is just to the right of the clips, like you can see there. But you don't have to take them out. So with other clips and pins, you would take them out as you sew. But there you go. Now you get a set of 12 there for 15 99 And once you start magic clipping, you're not going to go back. Um, and full instructions on the back and a website to show you exactly how to use them, because they're a little bit different from other clips, but very, very easy. Now let's have a look at this Devon County, because you do need to check out your baskets on this. I know a few minutes ago we had at least seven of you sitting there with it in your basket. If you've got your heart set on these beautiful fabrics, please don't miss out today. So we've got your 80-20 wadding here. Oh, eight of you now, okay. 64-49 OIGC-66. 
And again, that is your wadding and these are your fabrics. You've got William, you've got Lois, you've got Audrey in your Devon County. You've also got your plains, which are your purple and your ivory. And all of those together make up four and a half meters. It's a lot. Now, if you are new today, remember our PMP is done per day. It's not done um, you know, per item or number of times you check out. It's done per day. It's just added at midnight. Now, this is your Tim Holtz. We love this. It's more of a, I think, you know, if you've got these sort of colors in your home, if your home is a little bit more traditional, then this is a wonderful way of going. And what we've done is we've tried to find those fabrics that are going to absolutely go with these colors. You see, there you go. That's picking up that color there. And then the gold, let me find you the goldy bit. Where's the goldy bit? It's down there. There we go. And then you've got your um, latte, which is your plain for your backing. And that is 58.49, which when you think that's the whole thing, there's no additional expense because you've even got your cotton in there. So that's for the whole quilt. That's not just for the top patchwork or anything. That is the whole thing, wadding, backing, everything, uh, which is you know great. Now this is the um, Katie Jane, which is the floral that, we, that Janice has been working on today. OIGC88, and that is the new Katie Jane fabric there. You've also got your spot on, you've also got your blue spray time, and then you've also got that antique white, that lovely soft antique white in there for $54.99. Hurrah, lovely. Now, after the break, this. Ta-da! Now, this is how she started uh, with John on the 5th of February with the pinafore as a pinafore. But today, here she is sporting it, yes as a very fetching dress, a pinafore dress. So it's taking that pattern and making it something a little bit different. And I think it looks absolutely stunning. So join myself and Jenny after this short break. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Join Sewing Quarter at the Sewing for Pleasure show this March. From Thursday the 15th to Sunday the 18th, the NEC in Birmingham is transformed into fabric heaven, where you can enjoy sewing, quilting, patchwork, and dressmaking with the experts. Find the Sewing Quarter team on stand H06. And with the chance to meet our guest designers, as well as presenters Natasha and me, John, we'll have live demonstrations for you to enjoy, plus special show prices on exciting products. Snap up your tickets and bring a friend for free with our two-for-one ticket code exclusive to Sewing Quarter. Quote the code EV26 at www.sewingshow.co.uk and you can get two-for-one prices on adults and seniors for one, two and three-day tickets. Hi, I'm Victoria Pete, and here are my top tips. My first tip is when dressmaking is to wash your fabrics. As soon as you get home or as soon as it arrives in the post, stick it in the wash. Wash it as you would do with the finished garment. Get it ready so that when you're ready to sew, you're ready to go. My next tip is posture. When you're sitting at your sewing machine, particularly when you're doing something like quilting, pay attention to how you're sitting in the chair, because quite often when you're really concentrating on quilting, you have a tendency to hunch, and before you know it, you'll end up with a bad back. So my last tip is to not sew when you're tired. So many times I've sewn when I'm tired and I make mistakes, and you find yourself unpicking or wasting fabric. Sew when you're nice, ready and fresh. Make sure you tune in on Tuesday the 20th of February for two hours of brand new fabric. The journey starts at 10am when Lucy Brennan makes a quilt using the new map making inspired Meridian collection. From an exquisite map of the world panel to an all over compass print, we can't wait to see where Lucy goes with these. Our destination at 11am is the new Lemon Tree fabric range by Tilda making its on air debut. The bold blooms and playful details are sure to have you dreaming of summer. Imagine sitting on a patchwork picnic blanket, wearing a pretty floral sundress and sipping a glass of homemade lemonade. Tilda's lemon tree will take you there. So meet us here on Tuesday the 20th of February at 10am for two hours of new fabric fun. 
Only on Sewing so Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Hello, welcome back. I feel like this show is going to be a little bit get set, ready, go, um, because last time Jenny Smith was on, that was the 5th of uh, February. So I keep giving you the date, because if you get this pattern today and you want to make the pinny like this, so just the pinny, if you want to make it as, as a pinny uh, and not into the dress like this that we're going to do today, then have a look back for John's show with Jenny on the 5th of February. So go to YouTube and put in sewing quarter and 5th of February, and then that demo will come back up. But today we're going to make this pinny into a dress. Brilliant, timeless classic. So let me show you the different bundles that we've got, because these sold out in record time last time. The beautiful pattern, the pattern in itself, absolutely stunning. This is a beginner level for you. I know, because it said that beginner and what we've done is we've given you a lovely weight denim and also this is for your lining for your pockets and for the straps as well so half a meter of this and a meter and half of your denim so the 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 contrast fabric here is Amy Reba lovely and this is your denim this is quite a heavy weight denim so it's, it's not you know it's not sort of too crisp but it's really lovely so that is 41, 49, you get the pattern, you get the thread, you get two meters of fabric. We are limited on these. We've brought you what we can, but we are limited, just so that you know, because you're gonna have to start checking out already. Now the next one is a lighter weight denim. For you, oh, my little trolley's getting in the way. Um, more sort of spring and summer-like, I think. So it's a very, it's a lighter weight, almost a chambray in terms of your, your denim weight there. And then we've also put this. Now this is, um, oh gosh, what's her name? Kim, 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 uh, no, a Amy. Amy, yes, 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 yes. Uh, for Art Gallery Fabrics, 3949, I never know how to do her surname. Oh, so, Amy, Sim, Sim, I'm glad you can't say it anyway. Uh, Anyway, a lovely designer called Amy uh, for Art Gallery <laughs> Fabrics. I will get that. I will look that up again. Uh, and then you also get your pattern and your, um, your thread as well. <laughs> Jenny's saying, sit it, sit it, sit it. Yeah. <laughs> Both as bad as each other. Now, the kits that sold out in a super, super, super fast time uh, were with the, the linen, the beautiful linen. So we've got, here we go. You've got your thread, you've got your beautiful flax linen there. Lovely. Jenny's wearing this, looks fabulous. And of course, your, also your pattern as well. And that's 40 pounds and 49 pence. And then your next one is in the blue flax linen. Here it is. And then, so you've got your thread, you've got your meter and a half of the linen, you've also got your pattern, and you're good to go, 40, 49. So if you missed out last time, please just check out your baskets now, don't even hesitate. If you wanted it, you missed out, and you were disappointed. Don't, don't miss out, don't miss out. Now, Jenny, hello. Hello, nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a while. Was the great British show in Be Live the last time I saw you? Possibly, yes. Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Great fun. <laughs> now, Jenny, for those of you that don't know you, because we've gone to Sky recently, lots of new viewers, how did you get started with your sewing? Well, particularly with my dressmaking, I, I grew up sewing. We had um, a, a room in our house because my grandfather used to build boats and my nan and my mum made the upholstery for it. So oh, wow. sewing machines all around me from being very, very young. But particularly with my dressmaking, I really started about nine years ago doing it again when I was making clothes for my daughter. And then when I met dressmaking legend Anne Ladbury, who lots of your audience seem to know, and they always come and want to talk to me about just <laughs> yes. yeah. So basically, she's retired. She lives not far from me up in Yorkshire. And I've been dressmaking and doing tailoring and everything with her for the past six years or so. Wow. So she gave me this amazing foundation in dressmaking. And that's partly 
the main reason why I wanted to start producing my own patterns because all that knowledge and those skills I've got in my head I want to be able to share with everybody it's as well. It's got to be shared, hasn't it? Has, it? You know, especially when you've had that um, when you've had that chance to work with someone that is so talented and you know this is how we learn, isn't it? Yeah. Just wonderful to be able to share that. Now producer Paul was already saying Natasha, you're gonna have to tell everyone, gotta start checking out because <laughs> otherwise we are gonna sell out. Um, so we'd better get started. Okay. So, lots of people, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's made the Hepworth apron from last time as well when I did the show. because I got in. Yes, and I got some lovely emails and really lovely feedback from, from Sewing Quarter viewers. So, thank you very much. It means a great deal when it works and people are enjoying the pattern. Um, but what we did when I designed the pattern, as soon as I started to wear it and have it around the studio, I was like, okay, this needs to be a pinafore dress as well and then I can wear it all the time Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, because I use it when I'm sewing a lot as an apron because you know I don't get covered in threads I've got my pockets for my snips and everything but also well I like pinafore dresses and what I wanted to be able to do was make it into a really flattering shape nice so a pattern hack essentially is when you take a pattern and you add value to it in a way because you can do a bit of something else with it. So all the details of how to do this are also you know, on the website, but I'm going to talk through it today. And I've done in the dark denim, it looks really, really lovely. It looks lovely, doesn't um, it? The contrast we use to, to line the straps and in the pockets, and then also in the lighter denim, really nice kind of spring summery feel. I really love actually that we've got the contrast fabric in there because it, it's just a little hint that there's just something quite exciting going on in there. Yay! And, and it is beautiful, it is. that print. And also, it looks really even, you, you know, nobody else sees it when it's hung up in your wardrobe, but you feel like it's finished off really nicely inside, and I think special. that makes you want to, to wear it as it's, well. It's when you have something that's been tailored to you, and you, you somehow you stand differently, you walk differently, yeah. there's a little bit more... Yeah, yes. and it's that attention to detail. Not everyone will know it's there, but you know it's there. Exactly. So... The first thing to do is to create a skirt back. So okay. essentially, from the Hepworth apron pattern, you use the pattern piece for the front and we adjust the strap slightly. The pocket pattern is exactly the same. So the only thing that people have to do is just create their own skirt back. And don't run away and think, OK, <laughs> oh, I can't <laughs> do it. pattern drafting, because it's really simple, step by step. And the thing about it is that you're going to measure it to yourself. You're going to draft. All you need is a ruler and a pencil to do this and some pattern drafting paper or some newspaper. It doesn't matter. This is as difficult as it gets, this simple shape here. And once you've done that, you've got all the tools that you need to make a really nice fitting pinafore dress. So what you start by doing is drawing a straight line onto the pattern paper here which mm -hmm. is 29 inches and that means that it will be the same length it will fit nicely then from the side seam of the apron front so down is to that the floor. from so that's from here there yeah. to the bottom is yes. 29 inches yes okay. so everybody regardless of your size you'll you'll start with that dimension here and then what i've done is given dimensions for measuring across so we start with 10 inches at the top here and then measure down and across again so I've just given a few pointers to, to create these lines here to make the, the outline of the skirt. Because this is slightly curved isn't yes. it? You've got your straight line this end yes. and then there is a slight curve there. Now very quickly talking about sizes because this, this is something that will always be asked. This goes from a size 8 to an 18. Yes so the apron comes in two sizes and that's that's the approximate sizing that we say but Equally, there's plenty of room as well. I mean, when we, we pattern tested it and we had lots of people come through the studio and we did have people larger than the UK 18 make it. And you can add a little extra here because the idea is the apron doesn't actually close at the back, it's open. No, absolutely. So that when you're sitting up and down, it's convenient. So adding a little bit extra there, it still hangs nicely and works fine. What we've done with the skirt block is I've said you can make it to these basic measurements and then simply on the side seam so on the slightly curved side here you can add on a couple of inches and it tells you on, on, on the blog the details of that for the different size increments. Now hang on let's let's you because if you mention the blog this is where there are extra details as to how to make this where can we find this blog? Okay so it's www.jenny with an i hyphen smith 
www.hepwithapron.co.uk and on, the, on that page there's the Hepworth apron, there's all the video tutorials for making the apron and then there's the Hepworth apron hack and if you click on that there are videos, there's measurements, there's photographs, so the whole the process is this. there. Yes. So there are how extra ones, this. so watch this show and then if in doubt and you want a little bit of more hand holding yes. then, then head to there. Okay. Yes. So what you would do, and if in doubt, generally, add a couple of extra inches if you want to on the side here, because the trick is I'm going to show you how to fit the zip in the back of the skirt. And what you will do is you'll do that first, and then you can pin and fit the pinafore to suit your shape. Because oh, I've right. made a couple that are a little bit more relaxed fit, a bit like wearing the apron, so it's loose around here. And then actually this one, you can see it. This is the one in the photo, isn't it? Where it yeah, it's, it's quite figure hugging, fits, so yes. it's more for like maybe dressing up a little bit as well. Okay, so once you've got your skirt back pattern, what you're going to do is then cut that out of the denim. Producer Paul says we're going to sell out, please check out your basket. So we've got that here. And what I've done, just for demonstration purposes here, again, is I have just added, because I'm going to make this is a little bit more of a relaxed fit denim one. Okay. So I've just added an inch and a half along the curve there. Okay. And cut those two out. We have a little dart, which it tells you also how to, how to draft on the pattern. But I was just going to show people a quick way to transfer the dart. Once you've got your pattern piece on like this, instead of having to use tail attacks, if you just snip down one side of the dart mm. line and fold it backwards, like so, you can just go in then with oh, your tailless chop. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, that and, super quick. And draw it in. So this is for beginners. Yep. And I think lovely because you're going to get an idea of how to start doing darts, which can be a scary thing for some people. But don't be worried. That's the whole point, isn't it? Don't be worried. This isn't... This See, isn't. This is. This is because it's a relaxed fit. It's not going to be. Oh well, I can't possibly look at that because it doesn't hang nicely. No. This is very, very gentle introduction for you yeah. to the wonderful world of darts. Definitely. And so there it is. That took not very long at all. And then what you would just do is flip over the oh, other so you side. Two of these. Yes. Right. So these are your your skirt backs, and then you would simply flip that over and draw in the second dart like that. And use the, the flat edge of your tail as chalk. Sometimes people use the points and then it breaks, but you actually, to get a straight line, you want to be drawing on the flat edge like oh, that. Oh, really? Yes. And you can sharpen that with your scissors if it gets blunt, but, but you draw with that line. Okay. And then it's a bit neater okay. like so. So once your darts uh, are drawn in on the back, you can then take your skirt piece and you can fold on the dart and pop some pins in. And the way I do it is I, I pop my pin through on this side and just eyeball that it's hitting the right position on the other side. Right, I do just need to tell everybody that we have more of you with this in your basket than we have stock. We thought we'd bought enough stock. <gasps> so congratulations. <laughs> well, you still have an opportunity to check out your basket, but at the moment, not everyone. If everybody checks out their ah, basket, okay. who has it in their basket, not everybody's going to get it. So it is now a matter of first come, first serve. So, you know, please check out. It is still available. So, you know, don't think, oh, I've missed out. You haven't yet, but don't miss out. Check out, if that makes sense. So then you're going to machine down the darts on both of the skirt panels like so. And it just gives a little bit of shape into the curve of the back there. Nice. If, if you know, if you're an experienced dressmaker and you know that you, you perhaps want a wider or a deeper dart, then obviously go ahead and do that. But we just put a, a small one dart in there um, for that process. And then what I'm going to show you next is the best bit about it, really. And this was a, definitely what I did at the Sewing Bee Live and what Anne Labry taught me. And that is that when you're dressmaking, 
you want to get the zip in to the back yes, of a garment. Yes, I remember you saying this. <laughs> yes. As early as possible, because you can't fit around a zip. So if you make a dress or you make a skirt, and often some patterns would tell you then to put the zip in at the end. Mm. Once you've done all the rest of the side seams and everything, if you leave the zip to last, then you've no room for manoeuvre really, because yes, it can only go in there. Yes, if you've slightly out, yes. then you're scuppered, aren't you? Yes. So if you get your zip into the skirt back or a dress back, well, like now, like this. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> what it yes. means is, first of all, these back skirt panels are laying flat, so it's much easier to handle because it's yeah. not sewn to the rest of the pinafore. Yeah, it point. also means, so access is easier. It also means that you can work much easier with it and then you can try you can then pin this at the side seams, you can try it on and you can fit at the side nice. seams. And also the best thing, especially for people beginning, is it gets the stressful bit out of the way. Yes. You know, because people are more nervous about well, fixtures and fittings. Imagine and... if you've made everything else. It, yeah. it's, like the, it's, it's like the quilting on a quilt. It's the last thing and it worries people. Yeah. Um, the last thing, if, if you leave the zip to last, then everything else is perfect and then you mess up the zip. Yes. Ah! So, so get it, we get it in now and then Forget the hard work it. is done. Relax. Yes, yes exactly. Okay. So what I've done is, because the denim was a little bit dark and I wanted everybody to be able to see, I've just brought some little samples oh, so that you. I can actually fit the zip in here and show you how to do it. Okay. Okay, so if this was going into the centre seam here, the first piece of advice, what I do is I cut a strip of interfacing that's an inch wide and... 10 inches long mm -hmm. or longer than your zip and you, we're, we're putting an eight inch zip into a concealed zip yes. in, into the pinafore dress so it sits nicely and so first of all I'm going to get this iron on interface in okay and so nothing fancy nothing fancy what it weight? doesn't really matter what well this is the this is the 250 weight so um, that's the medium, medium yeah weight, isn't something it? that feels similar to the cloth that, that you're putting it onto okay. really and it just brings your fabric up to the weight of the zip okay. so that the zip doesn't hang and look out of position it also just makes it a little bit easier to sew in so I've, I've ironed that on first. It doesn't even really matter if you've got black or white interfacing because you're not going to see it no. at the end of the day. And what you want to do is, the first thing is we're going to get a different coloured thread in your sewing machine or you can tack by hand. And you're going to do a row of stitching from the top mm -hmm. to eight inches down on the back okay. of your skirt. Okay? So to the end of your interfacing. Yes, or ju just, just shy of just it, shy actually. Of it. Okay, so hopefully if you can see on this panel here, I've done that row of stitching in pink. Mm -hmm. So this is a 5.0, which is the biggest stitch length that you'll get on a machine like this. Is that, is that going to come out then later? Yes, it's so coming out quite soon. The length, the longest length you can do. Yes, and you don't want to go forwards and backwards. So okay. you're just sewing down there and what you want to then do when you've done that is then put your normal thread into the mm -hmm. machine that you'd be using for constructing the dress and from straight underneath where that tacking has finished mm. then go back to your normal stitch length i'd use i put it in the instructions all the way through the heft with apron because i think again people when they're dressmaking sometimes use a tiny stitch length and then it doesn't very press very neatly so 3.0 really and oh, so it's the, your details of that that detail. Yes, your details of that detail. Your instructions <laughs> of that yeah. detail. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, uh, because because I'm a quilter as well. Anne Labry was always like, turn your stitch length up, Jenny. She wasn't that scary, but she was always telling me because you get so used to yes. sewing with a tiny stitch, and when you're doing dressmaking, if you want your seams to lay flat, you, you must go with a, a longer stitch length. You see, it's I would have thought it'd be the other way. You know, in my head, it would have been, you know, I, I want, I want this, I, w I want this to stay together, and yes. so I don't, you know, I. Want Want a tiny stitch length so that you know it's not going to rip or anything as you but actually longer gives a better yeah it basically mm. if you think in the length of a seam the same amount of thread goes into it whatever the stitch length but the the intervals at which the needle punctures the thread become shorter and really in dressmaking you don't want that needle going through your cloth all of the time oh, so see. so it still it still holds strong but it lays and presses a lot flatter and a lot neater okay. so it's an important part of dressmaking. It does make a difference. So we did try with the instructions to always point oh, that well, out to people. Because it's one of, it is one of those things that 
I forget about. Yeah. They're no good. So then, so then you would have stitched down to the bottom. And so essentially what you're doing, if this is the center back of my skirt, you're sewing it together. So it's going okay. to look a little bit like it's going to look once it's finished and the zips right, in yes. there initially. Oh, can we have the iron in a second? Yeah, please? of course. And also, just to point out, if you want a nice split at the back of the pinafore dress, I don't well, know if you, you can actually see. mean to be there, not because you've tried to get out the car yes. and it's too tight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's happened. Like this, if you can yep. see. Ooh. Oh, might hang be a bit. <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> I'll wake her up. You show everyone. Okay, so there we go. So what I've done is I, I will have stitched down this seam just now, but I would stop nine inches short at the bottom and do a reverse stitch there. So I've essentially just made that seam and I've tapped this seam and that's where we're going to put the zip into now. Excellent. Okay. Oh, she's very lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I'm going to... Um, This is the easiest, easiest way to fit an invisible zip. Sometimes I've seen different websites and people are pressing zips and all kinds of different things. And you don't need to do that because if you stitch up the gap first now with your tacking stitches, it means you can go in and press this seam really nice and flat before you sew the zip into it. And then you, you don't need to go into that seam again. It will, it will lay flat. Do you want me to do that? Uh, we've had a lovely message from Gail uh, in the Vale of Glamorgan, who says, um, missed out last time, already checked out this time. See, Gail's not leaving anything to chance. <laughs> well done, Gail. Thank you. you. see. And another one from Nicola coming in, apparently. Any moment now. No, it hasn't. I, uh, no. You look good in your apron. I, I think I'm going to have to make you one to have here. There we go. She says what? Sorry, beautiful. Oh, can't wait to get it in the post. Love Jenny's patterns and demonstrations. Oh, is thank that you. pressed okay? That is wonderful. And that's the, that's the thing. That is, imagine if that's the outside of your skirt. That's how it's going to look. We're just, now all we've got to do is sneak that zip in behind that seam, but it, it's pressed flat and you've no gap at the bottom because where the basting stitches stop and then you've actually sewn the seam of the skirt, you don't have to go in afterwards like on some zip tutorials and, and close that little gap. It's already all done for nice. you, okay? So the next step, what you would do is then place the, the teeth of your zip down onto the stitch line and you can see so where the tacking mm. ends and the stitching begins, you want your zip to be just slightly below there because you can't sew right to the bottom of an invisible zip because right. you can't get past the zip head when you insert it. So you always need to have a little buffer at the bottom end of okay. the zip of about an okay. inch for yeah. it to sit nicely there. So you would position that onto the seam. We've also left a little bit of room at the top so we can turn this over at the end. So an inch or oh, so there. Oh, yeah, because there. There, will, there will be a, a seam, won't there, at the yes. top? Yes, yep. okay, yep. And, and then you can tack that into position, which is what I've done on this little sample here. Hand tack. Hand tack down both sides of the zip to keep it in place before you machine it in. Okay. And the good thing about this tacking is actually, because it's not going right through to the front, it's only going through the tip, to the seam allowance, it can stay in. So, oh, right. so don't so worry about it's just it an extra in. layer of reinforcing, really, but it can stay there, okay? So if you imagine now, what you can do is unpick those tacking stitches which were at the front. Yes, and that's here. safe to do yeah? so now. Yes, because you need to actually be able to get in to the ah, zip okay. yes. to be able to sew it in position. So now, this is tacked in place, but it's not invisible yet. Right. No, <laughs> and okay. what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you on the machine, you don't need an invisible zip foot. And Anne Labry, actually, she wrote the instructions of how to insert invisible zips when they first were introduced in the oh, UK. Really? So when she was teaching us this, she was like, I know so what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. I'm not calling her a whore, but you know what I mean, yes. <laughs> okay, so you, she's never used an invisible zipper foot in her life. I've never used one. You need your regular zip foot. And what you're going to I do didn't next... There was an invisible zipper yes, foot. Yes, you can get a separate one that sits over the track when you stitch them in, but, but you... 
you really don't need them. But once you've done, done this tacky now, it was at this stage, you can get into it. And what you're going to do is you're going to open this up and with the, with the zipper foot on, we're going to just roll this back as you go and you're trying to stitch close to the zip teeth. As close as you can. Yes. Okay. So I will show that to you on the machine with my zip foot here. So Excellent. This is the most complicated bit, I guess, of this hack. But like I say, once the zip's in, you're going to feel like anything is possible. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. I remember my absolute I did a zip when I was seven, and then I didn't do another one until I was nearly 37, I think. You know, it just yeah. in, that, in that time, it, oh my goodness. It, I, I used to pick up patterns, and, there's a, and you look, and there's a zip, and you're like, OK, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to this. I'm glad that you did that to you, because that gives me hope <laughs> that actually one day, um, I'll look at zips and not panic. So stitch length, OK? So again, because when you sit, you put these machines on, they default to 2.4 or 2.2. Turn your stitch length up. Even for putting in a zip, you don't want a tiny stitch. You want it to lay nice and flat. So I've put that up to 3.0. I've moved my needle to the left. Yep. And this is opened up now so that I'm only sewing into the seam allowance. So this would be the exterior oh, so of my dress here. It. So That's it's completely the... invisible. Okay. And what you want to do is you just roll in the zip tape back and you pop in the needle in and the foot down and then away we go. I am, I've been having a little tidy up in my, in my workroom and I actually found, because I started sewing on my grandmother's singer. Oh yeah. And, um, and so it's, oh, it must be over 50 years old now. And I actually found, and I didn't know I had it, her zipper foot. Ah, and it, nice. It's, and is it a really lovely, really, really tiny, tiny yeah, yeah, they're brilliant. Like, oh. So zipper feet always look, mine are slightly shorter than this one, but it's always pretty much looking like that. And what it means is that because the front, if you compare it to the normal foot there, yeah. you've got all that bulk. What the, the zipper foot means is that the needle can physically get closer yes. to where it needs to be, yes. essentially. So they always look similar to that. So all that I'm doing, if you can see, is I'm gently rolling back the zip tape as I go down and then doing a few stitches as close to it as I can. And the good thing about this technique is if, if for any reason you do this and then you, you have a go and it's not quite invisible, you don't have to unpick that because you're only sewing into the seam lounge. You can just go in and nudge a tiny bit further over oh, it. And, and all you're doing is, in a way, reinforcing, reinforcing it. Perfect. So it's absolutely fine. Jenny, we've had a quick message from Carol. She says, hi, is this the same pattern and any kit to make either a dress or an apron? I don't want to miss out, says Carol. Yes. So the, uh, the two ones with the linen will make the apron. The pattern is exactly the same. What we're showing you is what Jenny calls a, a pan hack, is how to take that pattern, a couple of little eeks and tweaks, and turn it into a dress. So you kind of get an extra pattern, aren't yes. you? A, an extra way yeah. to use this pattern, which is really lovely. So if you've gone for either of the one with the flax linen in it, uh, then that will make uh, but, but, well, yeah, these. <laughs> like apron twins. Um, and if you're going for any of the ones with the two meters of fabric, then you're also getting a lining fabric so that you can be doing. Let me show you the back. So you're just going to have that that little detailing in there, and in it's, the pockets. And yeah, and in the yeah. pockets too. So it's just adding. There you go. Cinnaboldi. Cinnabaldi. Cinnabaldi. Yes. There you go. And you the salvage on that fabric really yes, useful. It's, it's not probably on there. Detail. Well, no, it's probably on there. But that's who's designed that fabric for Art Gallery Fabrics. Gosh, good job she lives in America and probably isn't watching. It'd be so awkward, I'm, wouldn't it? I'm just going to show you what I was talking about earlier is when I said you can't sew to the bottom of a concealed zip, you, you're undoing the zip as you're rolling along and stitching into it. And obviously you can't go, it won't undo beyond there. So what you do when you're fitting the invisible zip on the machine is stitch as far as you feel comfortable. So I'm rolling this back until I feel like I can't get into it anymore. Yeah. And then do a reverse stitch and finish off. And then what you can just do is secure the rest of the zip tape just lower down just by stitching a bit closer to the end so there because th from the right side you're not going to see that but it just means that you know it's secure 
And the other thing is you never need to sew across the bottom of a zip because all, all that you would do on something like that is actually create a bump right at the bottom. If you sew it in down both sides of the zip, that, that's enough. You don't need to go across the bottom. It always makes a big what? messy bump. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. But I don't want to be too controversial on, on. on a Saturday this morning. Is very controversial. <laughs> because that's the bit that worries me about, is that I can sew a straight line, but I get, I get like a bit of a sweat on if I've got to go across because I'm worried about my needle and snapping that and yeah. this, that and the other. I, what, with any zip, I never have to sew across? No. I've never, oh, I like you, Jane. I've never done it in my garment sewing because if you'd imagine there, okay, this is really secure. This is tacked in. This is machined in. It's the seam is secured beneath it. Why do you need to sew across the bottom there? You know, the ends of the tape I've just machined and secured those there, so there's no need to go across there because it, on some fabrics it would make a bump, and it's right at the yeah. point where you don't really want a bump or to be drawing attention to that. So it's much. It's much especially better. Especially if you're doing trousers with a fly at the front or something like that. You know, you yeah, well, a fly zip's kind of constructed in a slightly different way how it sits in, but no. We're, we're definitely, when you're putting it in the centre back of something, then... No. And there you can see. So this is what Definition. I've essentially just done. If that wasn't invisible enough, like Pretty I say, to me. you would just go in and, and do a slightly closer of stitching. But that's, that's what you're aiming for. So your zip's in... Your gap underneath is already secured, and that would mean that the back of your pinafore at that point is all good to go. Fabulous. Now, very, very quickly, because we, we've got these here, we've had people who've eagerly seen these. Our eagle-eyed viewers, I'll tell you what, like, <laughs> what nothing are they? goes past them. Uh, what are these? Sending over to you, because these sold out last time, and they will probably do so again. Yes, so wonder clips are basically, particularly on the apron, and, and the hack, you do a lot of pressing, almost as much as you do sewing, because you've got to finish off all these lovely long curved edges that go up and around the strap. And when you're dealing with fabric that's a little bit bulky, or with the linen that's a little bit slidey, you're, you're pressing over a double hem, essentially, a quarter of an inch and then a further quarter of an inch for all these stages around here. If you can just pop a, a clip on, between pressing, it's easier than pinning because actually if you try to pin through there, the layers are quite heavy, so it's a bit more laboured. There's more chance, particularly with the linen, that you're going to damage the fabric and maybe set a little runoff. And I like the clips because you can keep them in until you sew pretty close up to them as well. So we just found they were really, really useful when we did all the studio testing of the apron. And everyone who tried them was like, I need those clips. So we, we sell them as a kit. There you go. And very pretty they are too. So if you'd like to get, it's under five pounds for your clips, 4 .49. And they even come on, on Jenny's sort of signature. I like your yes, heart. Yes, that's and my pin, little, my you? heart and my pin. Ah, oh, fabulous. There you go. There's the details for that. I'm just going to go and have a look at the bundles. Okay, wonderful. And see what we have left. Okay. Quite frankly. <laughs> right. so, don't go anywhere. I won't. Stay there. I'll be back in a second. Oh, I've got a bit of info, says producer Paul. I know it's been um, the dark denim pinafore kit with this one with the Amy Reba. Basically, it's sold out. But producer Paul's been working his magic. He might have managed to allocate more. So there are eight more available. I don't know how he's done this. Um, if you can't check out, give us a call. 0800 112 4433. Basically, on the weekend, it, it's just myself and Paul and the cameraman and the floor manager and the guests. So what he's been doing, he's been on the phone to the call centre and trying to work out a way that we can allocate more stock to this. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he's managed to do this whilst producing the show and, you know, everything else. Whoever said men can't multitask lied. They've never met producer Paul. Um, so he's been doing all that, working away quietly in the background. Um, so eight more. So you are going to have to be quick because essentially otherwise it's sold out. 0800 112 4433. Uh, just press option two. If you're having any issues at all, just press option two. Um, our call centre have been... I know, I heard the conversation in my earpiece. Um, the call centre have been primed. They're very, very helpful. It's free for you to call as well. So just give them a call um, because we think we've managed to get you eight more. But that's it. That's all we have. Do, uh, shall I put this to one side or not? Okay, so the breakdown, you can actually buy the fabric 
So let's just have a quick look at the Amy Reba. Now we had this on a show yesterday. Now by the half metre, it's 6 99 per half a metre. It's a gorgeous fabric, isn't it? And works so beautifully with the denim. It's like it was made for it, isn't it? I don't know if it was, but it looks particularly lovely. Do you know Amy Reba is a self-taught artist? It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, she's doing very well for herself. Uh, now then, the denim by itself, oh yeah, by the half metre. Now this is 146 centimetres, so nearly a, that's nearly 60 inches, isn't it? Um, salvage to salvage, which is why for this, you only need a metre and a half. So that's 4.99 per half a metre. And that's for this dark denim, very flattering, uh, OWJQ29. So if maybe you already have the pattern and you want to make it into a pinafore dress, then you can buy the constituent parts. That's what we've got them for you. There you go. Now, if you would like the light denim, now this is a, um, this is a much lighter denim. So maybe more sort of spring, summer. Here it is. And again, this is... 146, 48 centimetres salvage to salvage, but it is a lighter weight, and that's 3.99 per half a metre. So you will need three units, because we sell it by the half metre, three units there to make this penny. Yeah, awesome. Now let's have a look at the Navy Premium Washed Linen. Next, let me pop that with that over there. Now, bear with me, just a little bit of housekeeping. La, la, la. It's got my penny on, you see. Uh, now, here we go. Oh, this just feels, I want a pair of trousers out of this as well. It's lovely. Now, again, by the half meter, this is 60, 60 inches salvage to salvage, it's 150 centimeters to you or I who do centimeters. Um, and this is 6.99 per half a meter. It's a lovely weight linen. Really, really beautiful. I love this. Oh, yeah. I need me a few things out of that. Uh, and that's 6 99 CQEP58. If you want that, then you will need three units to do this penny. Oh, yeah. It's got a lovely, lovely, lovely feel to it. There we go. Now, the other thing to show you is the art gallery fabric by the half meter. And here it is. Um, and this, and of course, art gallery fabrics, they, they really pride themselves with, with the substrate that they use, that it is suitable for quilting, but also for dressmaking, because it's super, super soft. So that's $7.99. Right, Jenny, I'm coming back. Now. We did try really, it was lovely, because sewing quarter got the linen that we wanted. We tested lots of linens when we were designing the apron. And Why is we that didn't... so special then? It's a lovely wash linen, so you can get cracking straight away making your hep with apron. It drapes really nicely and it doesn't fray too much. It does feel amazing. So that was the thing, because you're doing French seams on the apron and we just wanted something that was had that lovely feel of linen, but didn't wasn't too difficult to Could put beginners off. Could you bring it back and do some lovely wide lead linen trousers oh, for yeah. summer? It's yes. what I want. Like nice long ones, they look great with flip flops. Um, but it's my I just get my question. Just bear with Anytime. me. I've got plenty uh, of spare time. Jenny, there's one more thing you've brought us. Yes. And again, I think this went crazy last time as well. John was, was very excited about this. Was he? Well, because he, he's a tailor and a dressmaker by trade. He was like, I wanted us to get some proper pressing cloths. And, and this is... And so there we go. There we go. go. Get a bit of a scrap, but no, get yes. a proper muslin cloth. So muslin cloth. Uh, make John happy. Uh, and, and get one of these. Why is muslin cloth so important? Because Ooh, look. pressing is as important as sewing to get nice finished garments. I think you have to prepare yourself for as long at the, at the pressing station as you do on the machine. Muslin, it protects the cloth. So when you're pressing, if you've got this, it, it's going to protect it from scorching or anything bad happening to it. It gets really nice crisp lines. It's see-through so you can still see what you're doing and oh. it dries out quite easily so you can see when you need to replenish it. So what I would do with this, in fact, I can do it because I'm going to need it in a moment, is I'm just going to put it in some water. She's got a little bowl like of water, blue, by the way, don't <laughs> <laughs> um, And then you want to press it, you want to squeeze it until it doesn't drip anymore. Okay. okay, so it's really nice and moist, but it's not soaking wet. And then whether you've got a dry iron or a light steam iron, it's going to create a really nice 
little blast of steam when you're doing your pressing. Exactly and, where you want it. Yes, and then you can instantly see an area will start to dry out. So you, you move the cloth around and use it in different positions. And then when you can, because muslin dries quickly, you can then just quickly run to the tap or your bowl of water and, and do it again. Oh, but brilliant. It, 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 just, it just makes the garment look nicer. And I, I use them even when I'm pressing all my handmade clothes really? between washes and things. I do, I, I do still press it properly, I Gosh, do. you're good you It are. doesn't take long and it looks nicer. So we've, we will have done the skirt back at this point or yes. you will have got your zip fitted in it. And then the apron front is actually very much, it's exactly the same. So you could cut out the size of the apron front that you want to and, and there it is. The pockets. So the apron front is all one piece. Yes, exactly. And what you can then do with the pockets, so you might think, oh, it's just on the inside, but actually when the, when the machine dawn, you do see a little hint of the fabric and you see it when you open them I up. I like it a lot. So, it's a little promise of something a bit special. Yes. So what you can do is make your patch pockets. The, there's video instructions on the website for the Hepworth apron. You literally right sides together, stitch around and turn them through. And just remember the little gap where you turn them through, which is there. If you then position the pockets onto the front of the dress with that gap at the bottom, when you stitch machine round, obviously you're going to close the gap at the oh, same time. So when you time. top stitch over, that'll just Yeah, so you don't have that. to slip stitch that. And on the apron, people do different variations. So I've done the pockets on a bit of a slant across the seams or I've got, straighter. Mine, mine, mine's I think, a bit straighter. Yeah, so what we recommend is actually people can try it on and How have do a go where they want go? their pockets to be comfortable. But if you want them not across the seams, then it's easier with the hack just to get them on at this stage, basically, because you can, you can measure, you can see that they're nicely balanced on the front. And on here, I've just tacked round so that then when I machine, I don't know, pockets always seem to have a habit of move, moving on me. So I do prefer to just tack them in and then I can enjoy machining those round and in position. And what the next step would be then is to fit this. So because okay. we would have the skirt back would already be finished and the zips in it, you can then simply pin it at the side mm -hmm. seams and try it on. Ah, uh, so then and you that's know when if, you're gonna if get you that want fit. it that looser fit or if you want it a bit more. Yeah, before you go on to do the French seams at the side. So that's why it's, it, it, all the hard work's out of the way then because you can get a really nice fit. And then it's the same as the apron in that you're then sewing some French seams. So you would have the back of the skirt. So you would be laying this out like so. What I'd just say is that obviously the, the side seams of your skirt are slightly curved mm -hmm. to allow for people's hips. To have curves. Yes. How, which how is a very good thing. Curvy have curves. <laughs> and the front of the apron is straight. So the key for this is to get the top match in here. So with a French seam, initially this is the first row of stitching that we're going to do. It with feels the right so size, wrong. it does feel It feels really like wrong. I'm about to make a big mistake. <laughs> but well, you're not. you, I mean, I'm, I'm going to hand this right over to you. Jenny, it feels like I'm about to make a massive mistake, but happily, we know she knows what she's doing. Yes. So you would. What I would do if I was trying this on is, is pin at five eighths of an inch because that's ultimately where your French seam, that's the amount that will disappear. Right, okay. And, and try it on. And when you're trying to fit this curve onto the straight edge of the apron, just don't pin it flat. Just actually hold it up and ease it around that curve. It's just hard if you're trying to keep it flat on the table and then you can simply work your way around to stitch that part like so. And that's the same with the apron. And the reason why we did French seams is because they look really neat inside, but also if it's been washed a lot, then everything's enclosed and tidy. Well, I had noticed that on the denim, you had actually overlocked the seam. So if you don't have an overlocker, then it means that, you know, you're 
you're not going to get the amount of fray yeah. because it is all in I just case. used on this on the center seam of before I put the zip in I actually just used the the stitch on this oh, machine. Oh the average one on there? Yeah. Oh fab. To, because that's the only exposed seam at the end of the day and because if you're using a split you might see it I, I did just over overcast that one. So hopefully that makes sense and then the exciting part as well or the little bit that you have to just do is to sort out the straps. Okay, talk straps. And so th this is the, the Hepworth apron pattern that, that you get. And obviously in the apron, the strap and the back are all as one. But because we've separated this out and made the skirt, we now just have to create a strap. And all that you need to do is measure down, down this line here. It's, the details are on there, but you measure down. Are these at pinning places? Yes. How brilliant. <laughs> I've never seen this on another pattern. No, I don't think anyone's ever done it. That was another, we did a focus group before we released this pattern about, with oh, absolute beginners, we have, pattern, about you? what people want. And we were like, would it be helpful if we kind of showed you roughly where to pin? Yes. The mistake that people do is, especially on a long edge, like on the apron, is they pin and pin and pin all the way along the edge. And that creates little bumps. And then when you cut it out, you get little bumps in your fabric. Actually, if you pin at an angle to the cloth, you can get in much easier with your scissors and you don't need as many pins as people think. So that's why we were just trying to be helpful. Brilliant. Okay. So, <laughs> so what you need to do is just trace yourself a strap with your pattern cutting paper like this. So it tells you where to measure across from. Create the strap. And the, the, the one thing is just to make sure that you copy the grain line oh, so, on the yeah. strap. Okay. Because actually, on certain fabrics, you want it to go over and, and across your shoulder and across that curve. So that's quite an important So it's, oh, it's ever so slightly off the, off the straight of grain. Yes. Which is going to give it that nice little bit of... Which makes it will hang straight yes. when you actually wear it. So what I've done, if you, you can just do the hack and just fold underneath. The, the strap hems, you don't have to have a contrast, but, but it just enough, kind of nice. looks nice. So on this one, you can see here, I've just, I've cut out one of each. So one of the denim, one of this gorgeous print. Lovely. And what you do is simply put them right sides together and then stitch down either side. And it's a, it's a half inch seam allowance that I've used to make a nice strap. Obviously, if you wanted them a bit chunkier or a bit narrower, then, then you could cut a little bit off. So how much of this can we show in six minutes? That's all we have left. OK. Well, all I would say is once you've done that, press it with your pressing oh, cloth. Oh, yes. Oh, if only I had one. Here it is. <laughs> so that you get really nice flat edges. Top stitch, if you want to do, just for an extra row of reinforcing. And sometimes it just looks could nice. Could I do that in a contrast thread as yes. well? Because it's a denim. and. A Quite like that. Yes. Okay. And you can even use a heavier weight thread. If you use a top stitch needle, I've used like um almost like a pearl cotton, a 12 weight thread on the Have machine. You? So like on jeans, you can get a really lovely kind Ooh, of heavy nice. stitch. And then according to the apron pattern, the pain point I was saying to John when we tested the pattern was when you add this final band on the apron and flip it over because inside all of the seams are enclosed. So you make a little sandwich and flip it over. And there's a video tutorial to show you every step of that. But when you do that, you're going to attach the straps. So I've, if I can bring this lady over Bring her now. in. Bring <laughs> her in. So I've attached the straps here and finished off the band at the front. So it's really nice and neat. And the last process, when I've done the apron, I've actually, I've got the pockets on. I've finished the front band. I've, I've done the darts and I've inserted my invisible zip and the straps are now loose so that what you can do is try it on and establish, you can have them straight if you like or you can cross them at the back and what you want to then do is position them and try it on, because Kay, who I work with, I tried her one on before the show, and she's got a short body. Yes. So she obviously took off an inch or so of her straps, 
um, and, and made it much higher, so it fits her really nice and snug at the back. For my relaxed fit, I have mine a bit, a bit longer, really. So the, we've given you plenty to play with there. You can then cut that, and then the last process of the hack is simply turning this strap. So we haven't hemmed this part yet. First of all, attaching the strap there, tucking it in, and then finishing off Oh, that so hem. It'll, it'll sit really nicely. So then it sits really nice and flat at the back. Oh. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. <laughs> Hoik her up, <laughs> put her back on. I'll show you on this one. Keep her, keep her <laughs> dignity there. So on this one, I didn't actually, I hadn't crossed the straps on this one, but you, I mean, this is, um, you can see that they, they just come in to the side of the centre zip and sit really nice so and it's like, snug. Ooh. It's up to you. Yeah, and the thing was, I saw some, some patterns for pinafore dresses. Another option without the zip would have been to say, like, have a fold over at the back, you know, like a bustle effect. Yes. To be able to put a skirt onto it. But then that adds a lot of bulk mm. there. So I did, I did want to keep no, a really nice silhouette. No, this is nice very silhouette. flattering, isn't it? A lovely, yeah. flattering fit. Very nice. I've got a message, apparently. Carol says, yay! I've just made my first sewing quarter purchase. Thank you for answering my question so quickly and clearly, says oh, Carol. Brilliant. Carol and Devon, you are absolutely very welcome. <laughs> and congratulations. And you'll be getting a free cutting map if it's your first sewing quarter order. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. That's wonderful. So what else do I need to tell people, do you think? Um, 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 so, hang on, we've done, we've done that. We've done the grain line. God, we're, we're pretty much there. We're oh, right. the pressing ham. When would we use pressing the pressing ham? ham? For the darts. So I'll just show you, actually, if I just take this. Of course, she's on off, on off, on off, isn't she, this one? Here go. <laughs> yeah, there's a little video on this. But basically, if you're pressing a dart and you've got a pressing ham, I didn't have one for years, and then I was like, why haven't I bought one of these? <laughs> they're magic. Only pounds. <laughs> yeah. No, they're yeah. fantastic. Then what you want to be able to do is, when you're pressing it, is you can put it, and you can put the edge of the dart off the edge of the ham there. So initially, you want to be going in only with the toe of the iron, because you don't want the imprint of that dart coming through onto the right side of your fabric. So you're only really pressing the stitching hmm. to lay that and set that in. So you, you can go along and go right down to the edge of the point. Because when you're pressing a dart, you see, you want to get a really nice finish at the end. It's you, invisible, you, isn't it, almost? You, you can barely, barely see it. And I hadn't even thought about the fact that, actually, if I pressed off something then well it was just i hadn't thought about that i would get the impression of ah, that okay. as well so that's top top top, top tip, tip. Jenny, so you'd top have your tip. pressing cloth on top as well really but then you would just be going in with the toe of the iron and then on on a dart you would also always then flip it over and do the same on the right side but again you're only going in to the stitches just there yeah, because you can see, particularly on a lightweight denim or something like this, if you bang the iron down on there, you, you're going to get that through. impression. And once it's there, then it's, it's hard there. to get rid of. No, absolutely. So, Two quick messages things. before we finish. Heather in Kent says, how lovely to hear Anne Labbury's name again. I am now a pensioner, but in my youth, I followed her and learned uh, from her on House Party. She says, it's my oh, house hero. Party. I've been watching all old um, YouTube videos of House Party because there was Anne Labbury doing the sewing and she made all her outfits for every programme that she did. And then there was someone else doing cooking and it was just brilliant. Oh, she, wonderful. And Eileen kind of says, thank Thank you, thank you for such a lovely tutorial. Only found sewing quarter a couple of weeks ago. I've learned so much. Off to practice French scenes. Oh, that's that's lovely. wonderful. Thank Jenny, you, thank really. you so much. Now, you're back in an hour. Yes. With something completely different. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, so if you have, if you're a bit stumped about what to get your mum for Mother's Day, this is something that you actually made your mother it for is? Mother's Day. Yeah. You had to go and nick I it back from her. It. <laughs> yes. it will, we'll make sure that you get it <laughs> back. Right. Don't worry, Jenny's mum. Right. I will okay. see you in an hour. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. Right. Now then, um, just something to mention very quickly. Um, John did the show where initially you made the pinny on the 5th of February. So go to YouTube, Sewing Quarter, dot, uh, Sewing Quarter, and the 5th of February, and Jenny and John will come up and you can watch that again. So that's for the rest of it. If you want to look at those extra video tutorials that Jenny's been talking about, then head to her website, which is Jenny with an I hyphen Smith dot com. Is that right? Dot co dot UK. Right we go. Now then let's have a look at these kits. This kit here. 
You might have to give us a call. This is the one we've tried to allocate more stock for, um, but it's not showing up on the website necessarily. So give us a call if you're after this one. 0800 112 4433. It's free to do so. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but it just that's the only way that we can do it on a weekend when not everyone's in. Uh, but we are trying because otherwise it's sold out. Well done. Right. <clears throat> the denim by itself is here. Now, again, lovely wide dressmaker's width on this and a, a, a lovely... Well, a lovely field denim, a lovely weight denim there. So this is the heavier weight denim. So it's 4.99 per half a meter. O W J Q 29. So if you already have the pattern and maybe you want to make your own dress rather than just the pinny, then that's absolutely fine. You're going to need a meter and a half of that. So that'll be three units. Okay. Uh, and then the other fabric that we've done to contrast this is your Amy Reba fabric. Now, this is $6.99 per half a meter, but you can see those colors work beautifully with the denim. And it's $6.99 UXRW86. There we go. Lovely. Now, the lighter weight denim is $3.99 per half a meter. And again, you will need three units of it. But you saw earlier, you know, how beautifully that came together, especially with a... Uh, with the art gallery fabric. So again, this is a lovely wide width, 399 MUJQ28. So that is, uh, that's nearly, that's nearly a 60 inches. I think it's about 147 as opposed to 150 centimeters selvage to selvage. So yeah, you've got a lovely wide width. So again, just a, a meter and a half to make the apron. So it will come as one great long length as well because it will be cut for you. Uh, now, if you would like the fabric, that we chose very beautifully. This is from Art Gallery Fabrics. Then this is by the half meter coming in at 7.99. And in the kits, we only put in half a meter because you're just doing the inside of the pockets and the straps as a detailing. So you only need half a meter of that. But if you love it, why not get a bit more for something else? Now let's have a look at this premium wash linen because it, it feels, I have to say, it feels absolutely lovely to wear, really lovely. And it, has, it hasn't creased all over the place either, you know, which sometimes we, we worry about. Now over half of this stock has gone. So if you're after the navy premium wash linen, and there's a, it's a flax linen, it's really gorgeous, then that is $6.99 per half a metre. That is 150 centimetres or 60 inches selvage to selvage. So again, just a metre and a half needed in order to do that. Uh, now, uh, the clips that Jenny was talking about, she's got her own clips, they're under five pounds. So if you'd like some of those clips so that you can, you know, make life a little bit easier, 4.49, pop them into your basket. You've, you're only paying one PMP per day, so you're not adding anything, uh, any postage costs or anything. So don't worry about that. Just pop it in your basket if you really love those. And uh, multi-buyers on those. Beautiful, aren't they pretty? Really lovely. Now, Janice is back after the break, and we've got some beautiful bags to make from the new Tanya Whelan book that we have for you, which is just stuff full of beautiful, beautiful ideas. So I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. For this tutorial, we're going to be doing something called a tacking stitch. Now, it's very, very similar. In fact, it's the same as a running stitch, but this time it's going to be a lot bigger um, so you can remove the stitches later because it's a temporary stitch. At the back, we're going to go through the front. So if I go through the fabric first. So this time you can see that I'm making these stitches a lot bigger because this is just a temporary stitch that I want to be able to remove a lot easier. If I just do another couple of stitches for you. So what you'll be able to do when you get uh, at home and you want to remove the stitches, you should just be able to pull those out nice and easily. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website www.sewingquarter.com Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. 
To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Join us on Monday the 19th of February when guest designer Deborah Sims shows us how to sew a gorgeous reversible wrap skirt. Not content with being two skirts in one, this twirl-worthy pattern offers a choice of silhouettes, pretty binding, waistband ties and practical pockets. The best bit? It's a breeze to make! Sewing Bee star Deborah guides us through the pattern and an array of fabrics. Try on Fashion Forward Prints by Amy Butler, Vintage Ditsy Florals and Eye-Catching Hot Pinks. So make sure not to miss out and start planning this new addition to add to your wardrobe. Monday the 19th of February at 8am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. beautiful fabrics this hour and a brand new book Woohoo! now this is from Tanya Whelan it's brand new to me might not be brand okay I've been told off I'm not allowed to say it's brand new it's brand new to me but it's been on before but this is so what you love and this is by Tanya Whelan and if we just have, well, straight away, I know that this is going to sit really beautifully by my machine as I work through, so I can have the instructions to hand. Now, there's a little bit of everything in here. So you've got your bags, you've got stuff for the kids, you've got stuff for yourself, um, you've got all sorts in here. So she starts off by telling you how to use the book. In here, and also just a little bit about herself, how she got into sewing. Um, just that, you know, money was tight, and actually, in, in sewing for herself, because she didn't really have other options, she realized just how satisfying it was. Um, and then she talks about the way in which to use this book. This isn't, um, it, it assumes a little bit of knowledge, but um, she also will go through general sewing, sewing principles. And if you apply those, and you are absolutely good to go. Um, and it's very clearly set out. And it also, she's got sort of a glossary of terms in there as well. So if there's something that you'd like, oh, what does that actually mean? Because you're quite new to sewing. You can go and check there and have that. And she's also going to list. So she says that she's not going to, for each of the projects, give you a whole tool list. She's going to give you the basic tool list here. And then if anything in addition, she'll tell you at the time. But that's your basic tool list to have with you. So really, really nice and clear. Sets it all out. And then she starts to go through. So this is the bag that we've got today. This is the Amelie bag. This is what Janice has made somewhere. Can't find it. But there are lots of different variations and versions. And it's just ever so pretty. So there's also uh, the Zoe bag as well. And where was the class bag? Did I pin it down? Oh, 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 oh. So you've got all sorts of different, a bag for all occasions. There you go, this is the pretty pleated clutch. So we're going to show you how to do that one as well. And then you move on to sewing for your little ones, little ones clothes, clothes for yourself, really beautiful book. I do, I really rate it, I think it's lovely. Now, these are some of the bags that we've made today. Lovely. So this is what Janice has made for this hour. And here it is. What a nice size bag that is. Just sits very, very nicely. A beautiful fabric. Janice said this is one of her favorite fabrics that she's worked with. And here it is. So in your kit, what you will get is your Amelie Beth Studley bag. OK, so it's for your Am Amelie bag. And the fabric is designed by British designer Beth Studley. You're getting two meters of fabric in this bundle. Beautiful. Look at that, isn't that absolutely gorgeous? You're also getting your snap and your threads. That's $24.49. Beautiful. 
and that's what that can make. Uh, and then the clutch that Janice has made, a meter of each, by the way, so that you can just see 2449. Uh, that was, I just showed you that, that was what the other thing that we're making, but that's other fabric as well that we've got on the show. It's all here, looking beautiful. Which fabric would you like to go to next, producer Paul? The, oh, this one. Now we had, um, in Janice's first hour this morning, we had a brand new Katie Jane fabric, and this is another one. Isn't that just so pretty? So you're getting a meter of that and a meter of the plain that matches for 24.49 plus your snap and also your thread. Lovely. Now, if you'd like, this is your uptown fabric. And again, gonna give a completely different look. This is the one that Janice is gonna demo with today. So a completely different look, isn't it, with, with that? So a meter again of each of that and also a meter of your pink thread and your snap and you are good to go. So those will give you um, your fabric for this bag, this lovely big bag here. So you're getting two meters in all of those. Now, this is the clutch bag that we've also got for you today. Again, this is featured in the book. It's all pleated beautifully down the bottom there. And in order to make that, here we go. This is the exact one. Then this is 10.99. You're getting a half a meter of each. And again, this is your Katie Jane fabric. Isn't that stunning? Really beautiful, beautiful designs there. Plus your thread for 10.99. And then let's have a look. Ooh. The next fabrics that we've got for you, look at that. What gorgeous colorways. And this is Amy Butler. Oh yes, very beautiful. Half a meter of each of those. Beautiful. And then that's 12 pounds and 49 pence because you've also got your thread in there as well. Now, Katie Jane, if you're um, going for the clutch size rather than this size, then we've got the bundle because... Now, am I like, is this one brand new, producer Paul? I haven't seen this, so it's new to me, but whether I can say it's new is yet to be seen. So half a metre of your plane, half a metre of your, of your Katie Jane, which I want to say is new to me. And then you get your thread as well. So that's 10.99 for that one. I tell you what, clutch bags are normally really expensive, so to be able to make one for 10.99, fabulous. And then the last one over here. There. Now we had this, this was new on a show in the week. This was from the new Dashwood range, flock range, wasn't it? Beautiful, so that's your Dashwood flock. Half a meter of that, half a meter of your gray for 11.49 and of course your thread in there as well. Fabulous. I'm going to bring the lot over to here. There we go. Watch your arm on that. I will watch my arm. Thank you. Hello, Janice. Hello, welcome back. Natasha. How are you doing? Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you hanging there. Those, uh, now then, now then, now then. Another was this, bag. yeah, Lovely. whoops, was oh, this bag easy to make? Yes. Good. But tricky on the handles. That's okay. the only tricky that's part. That's the only bit. Is this here, which is the tricky part. And that's because but there's a pleat we'll in there. But so we can show you that. There's a pleat in the side. That's uh, what we're there for. Folding it over as well. So, no, that's, that's lovely. It's a lovely bag. I love the fabric. It's a good size, actually, yeah. as well. I like that size. I, I can get enough in there. Just enough. Yeah. yeah. So you could have about half a dozen of these, and that's a new device. <laughs> all around, but in all different all fabrics. Touch. So, and the difference is with this one, the strap is one side fabric, second side lining. So I found oh, no, so you've got the contrast. You've got the contrast on Lovely. This one. So it's really a bit nice. like our finish, really we just did. Lovely. Yeah. So, um, the one that we're using is the Uptown fabric. You've gone okay. ahead and done the main body of, of the, bag. the bag. It all seems to go on on the lining with the clasp and everything. So I thought, well, the lining's the best part to start on. Really. So we'll show that. So okay. because that is just the back and the front. So do you know what Together. I mean? Together. Mm -hmm. So whereas it's all going on on here, the lining. Okay. So I've already done the darts. You've got two little darts in the side, which I'm going to demonstrate on here. Okay. You've got a pocket, which I've done which is just a plain pocket with stitching three and a half inches in. So you've got like a double pocket on the inside. Oh, inside. nice. So phone one side, so, piece the other. Yep. In the actual pattern, they say that to do it in the plain fabric, but I've done that one in the plain and I've done that one 
in the pattern fabric on oh, here. I quite like, I I like thought, the contrast. Well, I thought the pink, this would show up more mm. on the show, more so than it being a plain one. So that's why I did it like that. So, and you just do your markings ever so easy. The only markings you have is for your clasp in the middle mm -hmm. and for your pleats here, because you, you're literally with the pleats going to go like that. Okay. And then just stitch across it. Now, um, it. something to note, so. the book comes with full patterns in the back. Yes, it does. So, full size patterns all in the back. All in the and back. they are really beautifully display. I love this book. It it's is really lovely beautiful. Book. So, in the back here, when you open it all out, all you've got them all the I know, it's she really thinks about these. Presentation is beautiful. Well, Tanya Whelan has been designing for years. Yeah. And, um, and actually, her fabrics are just... They're very, they're very recognisable. Um, she does papers as well, and you'll often see her, sort of her designs on yeah. the front of sort of Home and Gardens magazine and things like that. So you've got all of these, all in there, and that's for but the clothes, for the bags, everything. All what of the patterns I found are in there. Wonderful as well. This was only like one pattern piece and two straps, and yeah. I thought. Am I right? And I opened them all up just in case. <laughs> what was, else is there? What am I missing? What am I one, missing? One, that really. It was just like that. And that was it. Perfect. And the two straps. So again, easy peasy. But the trickiest bit is the straps. But we'll come to that. So if I start, so because the pocket's on that side, we need to bring the darts in that way. So you've got the darts coming in on the wrong side. So again, the triangles, cut them out on the pattern. Yeah. And then you just fold them in like so. And then you machine half an inch down across each one. Okay. So I'm going to do that first. Half an inch, which is the end of the foot. That's what I always use as a guide is on, on the machine on the 540. It's a lovely guide. And that's more or less the half an inch. Right. So okay. Well, that. that's good to know. So forward, right, forward and back. And then... And so what you do that so that that's going to be on the inside, you're not going to see that? That's going to be on the inside, so okay. you're not going to see it. And you do that on all four pieces. So you've pieces. already gone, gone ahead and I've done, done that. I've done it on there, yeah. and then on them, they're done as well. So there it is done So there. it's just four times. And, and this is giving this bag twice. this lovely shape. It is, it's a nice shape, isn't it? And, and also it's giving it more shape. room as well, yeah. which I'm always a fan of, having a bag with a bit more room. A bit more room. So rather than it just being flat, it, it gives it that 3D part there. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you do the pockets, which I've already done, and then we do our clasp. Right. So the clasp is, you've got your four little markings, and what I've done is... It's, and it tells you to do this interface. Yes, just a little it does. Bit, just to strengthen it on the back. Our magnetic so, clasps are yeah. so strong. They are. They're really strong. <laughs> <Awesome>. So you <laughs> do <laughs> want to always reinforce because otherwise you'll just rip through your fabric uh, yeah. because they are super, super strong. They are. So super just good. a little bit of, of interfacing. And that's it. Yeah. So then what you do, fold your fabric in half mm -hmm. so that if you notice, I've got this small dots and markings there. Oh, Fold it in half. Let me just show, because it's just it, a little bit tricky to see. Thick. Can they there see go. One, two, three, four. Can they see it still? Or do I need yeah, to go no, dark right. on the yeah. marker pen? So then, fold it in half. And again, with this, believe it or not, I actually tailor tacked it. Okay. But it was pointless. <laughs> it was better to have it done with a marker. So, and then you just snip in gently into the marking okay. ready for, to put the clasp in. So then you get the clasp, which I've lost now because I moved it to keep it out of the <laughs> Put it down somewhere safe, Janice. And you've got the washer and you've got the prongs. So then you put the prongs through mm -hmm. the, the little holes you've created, fold it over, put the washer on top, and then you can either do it with pliers. Is that the right way around? Yeah. Is there the right yeah, way yeah. around to that? So, and then push it down. But you can use pliers for this as well. 
Um, I use the back of a spoon. Do you? Honest. Yeah, because I am that high tech. I get out the back of a spoon and I press it down with that. Nice Don't want to hurt my fingers. Who's this, my finger? Yeah. <laughs> I do it. Little, little green here. I don't everything. possibly use a finger. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, back of a spoon is my best friend at that, at that particular moment. Oh, how funny. And again, fold it in half. Cut to the dot with one snip to the two dots. Get your clasp and your washer. Put the prongs through. Ever so quick, isn't it? Yeah, no, really easy to do. But these magnetic glass, they come Hold in your over. kit and uh, they are super, super magnetic. Ever so quick. Mm. It's one of those things, if, if you've, you know, if there's someone trying to pickpocket you, you're going to notice. You know, you're absolutely going to notice because they're going to have to really yank it apart. It's true. So then, right sides together. We are now going to machine. Oh, Janice, we put it around the wrong way. Hang on a second. No, yes, I have. <laughs> oh, how annoying. It's all right, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry. It doesn't matter. Um, so whilst you just swiz, change that around, here we go. <laughs> it happens. It happens. So in the book, good you're job getting, there's getting all sorts in there. Uh, now then. Okay, done. That's it, done. Here we go. This is, this is your bag here. <laughs> this is the Amelie bag. Now, this book sold out last time it came. So this is the first time I've seen it. So this is new for me. Uh, you might have seen it before. But here it is. So you know, you know, you see, look, that's what Janice is saying. That's just your one piece in there on here. So it's, it's cut on the fold as well. There's your strap. Now, it's really, really nice and simple and easy. Step by step, you've got your finished measurements, how much fabric and what you need. So the extra bits and bobs. But again, it shows you how to do everything, even down to how to do the class that we've just done. How to do your lining and your pocket, all covered step by step. Very, very clear, very, very easy. And so you just follow it down, and there we go. And then lots of other bag ideas in here. I really love this, because this is tied at the yeah, top. I think it's that's lovely, really lovely. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm very tempted to make that. It's a lovely book. But there's just that lots and lots of ideas. And she said, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to have enjoyed it. Yeah. And it, you know, no one's, no one's necessarily going to notice if there's a little, a little hiccup, just as long as you've enjoyed making it. This is the, um, the pretty pleated clutch that we've got the other bundles for this morning. And we're gonna, we're gonna split the show in two for that. Yeah. And again, step-by-step -step instructions, even the measurements for the pleats in there. So that is really lovely. And then this is what I say, sewing for little ones. Everything in here is covered. I love this idea. So this is... Um, that. You know, you know how that you they That's learn size and stuff like that. This is a great that way to get lovely. some beautiful fabrics and and get them stacking little stacking ones. I'm seeing my grandchildren tomorrow, and I saw, I spotted you thought, it yeah, last night, and I thought, it, yeah. oh, I haven't got time, time to make no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> but you can also link them together so they can they can play with them like that. And also they they're good for little hands. Little hands can fit around them. But you get the patterns as well. And then you've got little clutches for them, little yeah. bags for them out of felt Absolutely as well. Gorgeous. Well, you can make that with them a little bit of a plique and all those sorts of things. Um, I love these because we have, we have an issue with my son wanting to throw hard balls in the house. <laughs> so actually, soft <laughs> ones are far better. Well, the trouble is, if he throws hard balls outside, then the dogs go crazy and they're a bit big <laughs> to be playing with that. So lots of different things. And then That's clothes for ideas. little ones too. So you've got your ruffle skirt in there for little ones. Um, just and lots of ideas, even down to I quilted do mats for them yep. so lots of, we'll have another look at that in just a moment so i've done the one side why natasha was showing you the book so because the other side is exactly the same so all i've done pinned it down opened the seam made sure it's up so match, match your seams and up. i'm going to do exactly the same with this side so you haven't missed nothing but what you've got to remember with the lining this is the one that has to be bagged out so you leave the four inch leave your gap leave your gap yes so I'm guesstimating two inches either side. There. Then I'm just going to open. As long as you can get your hand through. Open that seam. Open the other seam at the dart. Match them together. Like so. Stick your pin in. Can't stress this enough to make sure your seams match. All important is your seams matching. So do that. Do the other side. Oops, 
stick a pin in there and then you're going to machine round mm -hmm. all the way up to the start of the strap. Oh, so, so just, just to get where there. it starts to curve up to yeah. the strap, you stop? You stop. Okay. Okay. So do that and do that. And then I'm going to start machining up from there to there yes. and then the other side. And then round the other way. So if I just do that quickly, half okay. inch seams again. Off we go. Now, do you start and stop? Do you do a little reverse forward back stitch, so yep. that you're back there? Yeah, move, cool. that, move that over, Dana, yeah. so you can make you. I keep going, going. Move with my leg. <laughs> We well, like make it a balancing act as well as, <laughs> you know, everything else. Fine. So again, stretch it open. You see me put spaghetti. Always use your seam ripper flats so you don't cut the fabric. Yeah, you are a big advocate of a, of a seam ripper to help just feed things through, don't you? Because yeah. then you're not pulling on the fabric, are you? No. Just but always use it flat because you don't want to cut your fabric. <laughs> no, 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 that would be a disaster. And also it gives you speed, believe it or not, when you do that. It gives you speed as well. So, so that's the one side done. So then just take the pins out on that side and then I'll start from here for the other side. Exactly the same. And you do exactly the same on the other bag. Right up to this point on your main fabric because it's here you're then going to put the two together right sides together which we're going to get right today now um, <laughs> it's always the moment i have to stop and think this is interfaced as well so if yes. you are making this and you want to just have that little bit of extra strength then interface these before you before you sew them and the handles are and the handles are interfaced as yeah. well so that's that's where we're getting to and as janice is saying you only sew up to this point here so where that um starts to curve to go up into the shoulder straps you stop right there hold it right there because then we've got pleats and things so with this you're getting candy floss for the inside you've also got your pink thread there as well and then you're getting your uptown fabric for the outside and there's a meter of each it's beautiful rainbow rectangles going on there and you get your magnetic clasp and you get your thread so then what you do put the one bag in the other so right sides right together sides together so, that's right. Yes. I just put the interface on the wrong side. Oh dear, oh well. And then what we have to do is, whoops, you then have to. Oh, do you pleat those all together? You pleat them all together. Oh. So again, so what you do here now, you attach that side, that side. That side, with <laughs> all the sides. With the pleats, so you do you attach the, the pleats first so you before do, you sew anything together. You, you sew all the way around, and then you do the pleats afterwards. Oh, okay. So you you do this first, right? And then you do the pleats with them all together. So you want to pin so it all again, again. Find those find those seams. Find them seams. Open them up. Pin through because then you've got that nice matching point. It's just it's that next step, isn't it, of of having yeah. a professional finish. Now, the um, Emily Uptown bag bundle is $24.49. Maybe you already have the book. Maybe you missed out on it because it's sold out. Yeah. If you did miss out on it, please pop that in your basket and check out. And then, of course, you're, you can get the bundles and you can get making straight away, which is ever so pretty. They're just so pretty on the fabrics these. today. And the bags are nice as well. So. It's a shape of this one I like. The shape Very of the satisfying. Bag. Yeah. yeah. One of my favourite so bags lovely. that I've, I'm, I've had for years and years and years is this shape. It's that shape. And it just, so I just know it's just going to sit just nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm only going to do half the bag. Right. So that we can get on with the strap. Okay. Because it's the strap that's tricky. And okay. I will sooner just do that, do that, and then I can get on with the strap. Okay. Okay. That's We're going to do a pleat everyone. though. So I'm going to do the pleat as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So oh, now, Producer Paul says we've got lots of new buyers today, which means that if you've um, spent over £10 on your first order, that doesn't include your PMP, then you'll be getting a little free gift from us, from us to you. You don't have to put in a code or anything. It'll just be, just be sent to you. Now, we love to hear from you. So as you notice, you know, we've, we've had in, um, in the other hours lots of lovely messages from viewers. So maybe you're new today, and maybe this is the first time that you've messaged in. You can message in via the website. Just underneath, you can watch live. Uh, just to the right, Oops. then there's a little message box. Or if you've got maybe a make that you want to share, with us then you can email and send in your photos there which is studio at sewingquarter.com and that will come straight up to the studio 
and, uh, and then producer Paul will do whatever he needs to do in order to get it so that it can be shown on air. Work is magic. So if you look at what I'm doing, um, again, just, just getting ready to machine round mm -hmm. the main front and the side of the one bag. Okay, lovely. One, not of the actual one side, should yes. I say, not the one bag. So and that's done like so. And then that's done. And hopefully you, you should, should, should have a centre seam and you've got a centre seam on your lining and then you can just match them, which I haven't done at the moment, so. <laughs> but there we go. That's it. Lovely. So let's machine round there. So let's machine round there. So you do, you do the machining round the, 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 the curve and then the you do... And the sides and the curve. Okay, and then, the and then you do your pleats. doing it on the one side. Because we're, we're running out of time for this of bag now. I know. So, so this is it. We've set Janice another challenge. Two bags in an hour. It's like <laughs> chan challenge Janice. It is, isn't it? Let me just pull them out. I worry about the thicker pins, so I'll just do that quickly. Sorry, Natasha. No, it's all right. <laughs> I just, don't want to stab you. Why don't I just pop them on there and I'll pop them in, don't worry. Sewing with friends, Janice. It That's is. what it is. Isn't Sharing it? Sewing with friends. friends. <laughs> Two nights actually. My mum and dad were up because um, Freddie's been poorly, so he's been off school. Aww. So so that I could Ooh. come to I work. Don't know that one. They um, <laughs> they've they've been up. The cavalry arrived Aww. to look after him so that he could have a couple of days more off school. And um, oh, and we were just sat. I had some. Yeah, yeah, I had to do some sewing and stuff the other night. So if everybody was just in my workroom. We all sat around and think my <laughs> my mum and dad had a glass of wine and, and <laughs> it was just it was just really now, nice. Yeah. Just chatting away as. <laughs> And it became quite a social thing. I know, mean, look, look. Mm, that's that's nice. what I'm saying. Social thing we make in the quilts. Yes, yeah. So. Well, there are there are lots lots of um, lots of sort of quilting groups as well that you can you can go to. And actually, on, from our um, from our fan page, what's been really lovely is that there's loads of you now organising in your areas little get together of to seven quarter so, fans yeah. to, to get together and, and have nice. a little sew along and a cup of tea and a piece of cake, which is really <laughs> nice. So it's making a community. Now, uh, the most popular bag is the one that I've got on my shoulder, which is actually yeah, Janice's favourite fabric too. The fabric's too. lovely on that one. Now, this is by British designer Beth Studley, who's just had a baby, actually. Congratulations, Beth. And uh, I love the fact she's like, oh, I haven't, I've been having a baby. Sorry, I haven't answered your emails. Oh. But, um, you know, I'll get back and, and sort it tomorrow. I like it that she's British. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, this is obviously her first. You, you know, when yeah. people think that life is going to be normal again <laughs> after having a child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I salute you, Beth. I absolutely salute you there. 2449, cameraman Mike, who has three, is just like, no, life is never the same. It isn't, if you it do isn't. have this in your basket, you do need to start <laughs> checking out. It's 2449. You're getting a full metre of each of those fabrics and the thread and the magnetic clasp. So what I'm doing is folding it like side out. <laughs> oh, so you don't, hang on, when do you do the, oh. Okay. Oh, half the stock of the book has gone. So if you missed out last time and you absolutely love it, please do grab it now. Uh, this is this is the joy of the, the bagging out. Oh, and of course it's only half sewn and as well. And gone, and gone, what done? Well, it's only half sewn, so it's only going to half it go. Is. Yes. <laughs> One of a dawn. No, I'm you haven't done anything. Doing don't worry. This, doing the half. This is the most important bit. I wanted to Pop show you. Pop that in there. Okay. So, what you do with your straps? Oh, first of all, I'll do the place. But I did it with the straps as well. <laughs> okay. But I'll do the straps. You've got your marking. So all you do, you go from A to B. So you literally just put a little pleat in by bringing dots together like so so dot on dot dot on dot so it's a bit like when you open up the seams and you want to match up those seams so you're there matching you go. dot to dot you've got dot to dot okay mm -hmm. and it has to be one and a half inches the finished width the finished width so we could just check that couldn't we again on the inches. mat here so this is about one and a half isn't it yeah 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 so it, that's what it has to be Okay. Okay, so then you do a little machine stitch or a basting stitch mm -hmm. down, and I'll, I'm just doing it an eighth of an inch. Right. So, so well, that, that won't be seen then, this, this little basting stitch? No. Do you take no. it out later, or is it just, it's I'll just there? 
I'll show you. Getting ahead of myself, so getting all excited. Just do a little eighth of an inch. I've done a bit and a quarter, but it's because I'm rushing. I would have done an eighth. So just do that as a little running stitch or basting mm -hmm. stitch or whatever. Then your straps. When you're making your straps, you have to leave a half an inch at either end. Right. Okay. Not sewn. Oh, right, okay. okay. So completely open like that. Look completely at that. Completely open. Because this was what half I was wondering. Inch. Well, how does this how does this work? Okay, so half an inch open. On, okay. So then what you have to do, mm. right sides together, mm. you have to match the strap oh. to that. Oh, I see. And then you machine down there. So again, once you've done your pleats, yeah. open up, don't forget half an inch leave on the edge of the straps. Yes, boss. Then you have to open up. This took me ages to work out. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm emphasizing. Janet has had the, uh, the brain teaser so that you don't have to. That's, that's how we roll so, here. I know. So what you then do is match, because I was thinking, how do I get that onto there? Fold it right, because when it was saying, so down half an inch, and I was thinking, well, how are you going to have yeah, that no, left no, on no, that absolutely, end? Absolutely, yeah. on that end. And I was thinking, if I turn that, what's happening? You know, it's not going on. It's not it's going right. on. So, so, what you have to do... <laughs> Janice has discovered, so that you don't have to ponder it and scratch your head. Your machine now down that. How far? Quarter of an inch? Quarter of an inch. It's all okay. quarter of an inch seams on here. Okay. okay. So, quarter of an inch, apart from that half Ooh. an inch at the end of the straps, okay. that's half an inch. All right. You know, when you still can't quite work out how it's all going to come together. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, no, I am. I am. I would have been, I would have been like you. I would have been there going, how? What? How? 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 How is this happening? So then, what you have to do then is... Trim that down. What so just the sew, one that you've you just, just sewn, you trim down. Just trim it the little bit of bulk away, like so, just to make it nice and flat. Okay. And then with the binding, you tuck that and you fold that binding in. Sorry, the lining. Yeah. The binding, the lining in, and then your hand stitch. You fold that in half. Yeah. The lining, and then your hand. Stitch Stitch that down. Now onto there. Onto there. I guess if hand. you wanted to, you could sew again and reinforce. Now you can you sew it, to? but I advise this by hand. Really? Definitely. Oh yeah, yeah. Is because that because you like sewing by hand, no, or just because it makes is, more sense? You can get into see this little corner there where it can be really messy. Yeah. With hand sew, you can do so many things. You can hide things. Right. So that it sits right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And with a machine stitch, you see, that's just going to go straight across. Here, I started in that corner there. Oh, and so you can round. get that sitting in flat. So I can get that sitting in flat. So Let me show you Janice's work over machine. here. So can, can you start me? And you can hide a multitude of seams with hand sewing. So it's all hand stitched <laughs> in there. So it's hand stitched. Oh, nice. And I use a double thread. Yeah. Which hasn't doubled on there. <laughs> or you can use a single thread, or you can use a double thread. Look at that, there we go. And then... And you just hand stitch? Hand stitch it, but you see, when you hand stitch, you can tuck things in with your needle and hide things, do you know what I mean? So you use your needle like so, you use your seam ripper yeah. to get in and... Yeah, get in. And well, Janice, I'm going to leave you to hand stitch that. things there. Because I'm going to go okay, and show the fabrics. There. Tuck all, yeah, put some like, yeah, you carry on, and I'll, I'll just... Ponder along and talk to myself. You, like you always do. ponder along over there, and I'm going to go and take Stop this beautiful you. bag. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do? What you going to do? Now, this bag is the most popular of the kids, and I'm not surprised because it's absolutely beautiful. There we are. I'm going to pop that up there for you so you can see it up there. There we are. Um, and 24 49 and this is the kit, a metre of that beautiful fabric by Beth Studley. It's just a riot of colour, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. And it also, it, because she, she's um, done outlines in, in like a yellowy colour, it almost looks golden. It almost looks like there's a golden thread running through there. 
it's really luscious, it's lovely. And then a, a meter of the green. And then you also get your thread and your snap as well, your metal snap. Oh, this is pretty too. What else is popular? Sorry, produce four. Katie Jane. Because they match. Oh, the clutch in the bag, they match. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. So a lot of you multi-buying and going, yeah, I'm going to make the big bag and then I'm going to make a matching clutch. This is just, this, if, oh, the, this, is, this is just my kind of fabric. I love this. Now, again, a meter of each. This is 24.49. For me, this is the first time that I've seen this Katie Jane fabric and I am very much in love with its vintage feel. Love that. And we've tuned it there with that blue. And that's 24.49 PFGC 00, a meter of each, and your metal snaps and your thread. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now the one is the one um, that Janice is making. Oh, the matching clutch you wanna go to next, right? Okay, let's go over here. So if you wanna get the fabric that you can make the matching clutch with, then here it is, 10.99. And it's a half a meter and a half a meter. And that's 10.99 plus more thread. QVGC11. Fab. Now we are allowed, I'm allowed to go over to the uptown. Uh, and here we go. So a meter of your uptown in your rainbow. And a meter of your candy floss. And then you also get your thread. And you also get your magnetic clasp there. There you go. Beautiful. Now. The other clutch designs that we've got, the Amy Butler is the most popular out of these. I love a bit of Amy Butler. And you do, you know, don't you just know when it's an Amy Butler fabric? Let me, let's see this in its full beauty, shall we? Very, very, very lovely. Loads of you have got this in the basket. It's just 12.49 and you're getting a half a meter of Amy Butler, a half a meter of the, of the blue that we found to match with that. And that's 12.49, QWGC55. She's, she's so clever with her florals. She really does take her inspiration from nature. And the colorway is just exquisite. Beautiful. multi buyers on that one apparently as well. Excellent. Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I don't know how long you're going to be able to get that fabric for. So yeah, no, do, do, do grab it. Beautiful. Right. Now, then we've also got, this is, um, this is Katie Jane as well. Isn't this a lovely range to be able to bring to air? Very beautiful. I love the warmth of that red in there. Ever so lovely. Could you imagine that teamed with a little black dress and a red clutch? Oh, yes. Uh, and then you get your half a meter, half a meter of Katie Jane, half a meter of your red, half a meter, and then uh, your red thread as well for 10.99. Fabulous. And the last one to show you is from the Dashwood collection, which we only just launched last week, which was the flock. And then half a meter of your flock fabric. And actually, we'll say, I'm, let me just pull that on so that's, ba, 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 ba. there you go, that's the right way around for you to see. You can see those, those beautiful flowers climbing through. So you get a half a meter of that and a half a meter. Again, all of these fabrics today, 100% cotton on this hour. And that's 11.49 QWGC 44. Now, Janice, so we've done that. Look. So I've sewn that. Yes. And that side. And so like just that. repeat and on the other three. Plate, and you repeat that exactly on the other three. Lovely. And that handle goes across to that one. Mm -hmm. And the other side goes across. across. So it goes across, not like that. It okay. goes across. Beautiful. So, and you do exactly the same on the other three handles. But what I do, just to give it another finish, what I don't mention, I just do a little bit of an edge stitch yeah. on the edge just to Reinforce. hold it really yeah. down. So that's your one bag. Fabulous. Right, next bag, so Janice. the next bag is the clutch. Wonderful. Again. Now, this is, again, this is again from the book. This is the clutch. Um, Easy peasy, wouldn't you know that? Absolutely. Now, pleats some, is one of those things that some of us steer clear of because we get a little bit worried about them. But here, it's just giving that lovely finish. Beautiful fabrics, lovely finish. And there it is, 
for the book. And that has got the book. I've got bits of fluff on it, sorry. Uh, and then the book will give you all of the patterns for this and so many more things. You've also got patterns for kids' clothes, adult clothes, really, really lovely clothes yeah. in there. Um, and as well as things for the nursery um, and bags, all very, oh. very useful. Oh, it's a lovely book. Yeah. yeah. Now, what are we doing, Janice? So, what we do, first thing you do is you do new pleats. Okay. So, in the book, it tells you. You have to do your markings. Okay. So you do one inch to two inch, mm -hmm. to three and a half inch to four and a half inch, and mm -hmm. that's how it goes up, and it will tell you in the book, and you end up at 22. So you do that both sides. Okay. Now, I've already marked it because of time, so we're going to crack on with the placing. Okay. So the first thing you do is you do your number one to your number two. So the, the first two um, markers, you match one to the other. And you join like so. But I'm going to do it this side. So see the one and the one? Mm -hmm. Pull it together, pull it together, and go like, pull it up. So pinch and go it down. Up. Pinch it up. Oh, I see. Right. To number two. Right. And then we stick our pins in. OK. OK? Yes. We do this all along. Right. So you're doing all the pleats, and you do now do you it from the this, long side. So you made this in the, in the red Katie Jane, and now we're demoing it in now, uh, the Katie Jane yeah. blue fabric. That's it. And if you just show them in the book, it will I'm show just exactly, it, yeah. exactly what I'm doing. So then you go from three and a half to four, four and a half, sorry, that you've marked. So basically it. just the next ones along. Yeah. And we just pick, and it says, just to pin, but I always put a pin in the middle as well. Okay. So, and that's exactly what we're just doing there, that bit there. So in the book... It shows you exactly... Here we go, I've got it in the book. Like that, so. So like here so. it is in the book, all these measurements. And this is what we're just doing there, so that to that. So whilst you... Yeah, while I carry on. And <laughs> so there are your measurements. Yeah. So one inch, two inch, three and a half inches, four and a half inches. Then you skip to six inches, yeah. seven inches, eight and a half. And so what Janice is doing is going A to B. And it's very, very clear here because then you leave that bit and then, again, you go there to there and pleat that bit. And pleat Leave it. that, pleat, leave, pleat, leave, pleat. All the way along. And exactly the same on the bottom as well. Janice is popping a pin in the middle. So you're going to do this. Yeah, this is on the, the wrong side. So you yeah, do this from the wrong, the wrong side. side. And it's very clear. I mean, it says here, bag, wrong side. <laughs> That's it. So it does, it, it's very clear. Wrong side. And then it shows you down here. And also do it in pencil. Okay. Because with a marker, if you're anything like me, <laughs> and you press it afterwards. Because again, it doesn't say press afterwards, it just right. says press on the ends, but I press, I press. So <laughs> along here you can see where all the pins are and where you're then going to baste. And, and I must admit, in the book, when I did this, I did this about three times because I couldn't get it to be 14 inches wide, which is right. what you have to finish up with. Okay. I ended up with 12 and a half. Okay. So I had to fudge it a bit because the actual lining Janice, is 14 no. inches. 14 you didn't. inches, indeed. <gasps> Shock. So I had to just stretch it out a bit. Okay. But you can do that over the whole loss and yeah. just do a little bit at a time. But if it doesn't work out to 14 inches wide, don't panic just and go think. Go with what you've got. As long as go you're with front what and you've your got, back are exactly because the same. it's happened to me yesterday and I must have undone this last night about three or four times. So, no. <laughs> I tried every different way of pleating as well. I thought, I'm doing it wrong, I'm doing it wrong. But in the end, I thought, no, I can't. I've got to go with it now. Otherwise, I'm not going to get back to it. So I just fudged it. In now, end. you've got 10 minutes here, Janice. So. Now, um, once you've got all of those pinning and it's all pressed, you baste across the two edges. Yes. And, and then, then you interface it, don't you? And then you? we interface it. So, now, the iron that you've asked for this hour, Janice, is our little, little iron. Our little iron. This is becoming a bit of a firm favourite with a lot of our designers. I do so like it. it it's, it's small, it gets into the spaces, it's handy to have in your, in your space. It's a steam iron, it's actually very powerful. That button there you press, 
and you, you get a steam function. I haven't filled it with water. It comes with a little jug so, and a carry case as well, so it's portable. And when you're done with the iron, you just wrap the oh, cord around there and pin it through there. Let me do that last one. It's probably gone up a bit there. And so it's a very, very handy. It was small but mighty. Just do that. It's like Mighty there. Mouse. There it is. So you it just remind do me of a mouse. Just do your pleats. Mm -hmm. Oops. I've gone up a bit because I'm trying to be quick and it don't do, does no, it? No, that's all right. Don't worry, so don't worry, don't worry. So I'm just going to do it to that. So. But you, you at home will do it spot on. Absolutely. Take your time. <laughs> this on, is the joy of um, being able to do this in the luxury of your own home without lots of cameras. So again... Do you um, stitch it before you press it, or do you...? Well, I, I, pre I press it now. OK. Do you want me to give it a press? Yeah, you can Because I'm here. That's it. So just press in the middle and on the end. So OK. That's it. Will do. Lovely. Now, oh, before we do that, let mm -hmm. me make sure that it's 14. <laughs> okay. We'll measure it along here. So you want it to be 14? It's that. It's got to be 14 yeah, it's inches. Come up 12 again. Yeah, it's it might be, it might be a small print so, error in the book. So know. if it comes up like that, with the pleats, just go in every other one and just stretch it out like a quarter of an inch or something until you get to 14. Okay. Don't just do it on the ends or because then it will throw out the look of it. Do you know what I mean? Now, the, uh, it, it so. also, you, would, you will do the, um, you'll also do the lining, won't you, the same? Yeah, the lining is the same. So the lining's pleated as well? No. The lining isn't pleated? No, it just right. goes flat, flat, flat on three. So. Oh, I can smell that um, best press the spray best on press here. Press. Actually, do you know what? The best press on here would be great right now, wouldn't it? Yeah. To reinforce those those pleats. Yes, it would. You could. Now, that would be another good thing for the best wow, press, wouldn't it? Know. Especially if you're making the both bags and then making the quilt. <laughs> and, 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 and. and then you've got all the starch and everything then, haven't you? I'm not sure if these are glass headed pins, so I'm going really, really carefully over careful. pressing because I don't want if I don't know if they all are. So there we go. Okay, so when you've done that, you then machine stitch, base stitch. Yep. Both sides. Okay. And then we take the pins out. Oh, you need to pop your bottom, bottom pop bobbin, bobbin in and the other bo thread. Bo 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 so. <laughs> and so this is, we're working with the beautiful Katie Jane Blue. And look how stunning that is going to look there. Just gorgeous. Uh, stunning, this is new fabric to me. I don't know if it's been on before, but it's new to me. And this is 10.99. You get half a meter of your Katie Jane blue and half a meter of uh, a blue that we found to match it, which I think might be the antique blue. Oh, vintage blue. I can never vintage remember blue. if it's antique or vintage. I think you do very well with the fabrics. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> I James. remember them all. I work with them and I'm thinking, oh, which one's that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always call it vintage when it's antique or the other way around. Yeah. I always get it the wrong way around. <laughs> it's the same with the pink. There's like a dusky pink version. I'm like, is that antique or vintage? Which one is it? <laughs> okay. Oh, I've got myself in a lot of pickle here. <laughs> no, I'm going. I need to take it out again. Sorry about this, guys. That's right. Try this again. Completely went wrong with somewhere. That's, That's all right. That's oh, the it. book apparently is almost sold out. So congratulations if you managed to get it. This will be the second time that it sells out. It's Gosh. been an incredibly popular book. It's what lovely. I love about it is that you've got patterns for yourself, patterns for your little ones, um, patterns for around the home as well. There's some lovely storage. Oh, in fact, whilst Janice sews down both, both those sides, let me show you some of the other things that I just thought were really lovely in the book. Um, so... Uh, we got to there, uh, we had a look at the ball, and then, oh, if everybody checks out, there's how many left? One left. Oh, so you need to be quick. <laughs> so ten of you have got it in your basket, we've got one left. So check out, check out. Um, here you've got your soft baby blocks. When Freddie was growing up, they were one of his favourite things, absolute favourite things. And here, um, I really like this because it shows you a very easy way to do sort of, oh, hang on, where's it gone? Um, tips to use elastic thread. So you do get, if she starts to introduce something new, then you do get your, your, your tips as to how to use that. And then she'll show you how to use it and so on and so forth. There's some lovely storage in here as well. There's some lovely home decor. So there is really something for everything. There you go. 
I love that. Oh, those, aren't they gorgeous? So check out your baskets. Don't miss out on this. Um, it's going to sell out. There we go. Now, we've got a message from um, Adele in Cambridge here. She says, yay, I got the book this time. Missed out before. Well done, Adele. You've got to be quick. You see, you do have to be quick. And there will be some people again today who miss out. I now can't guarantee your order. Too many of you have it in your baskets. So if you were after, please check out your baskets. So Janice is just removing a pin. She's basted down both sides of those pleats. It's going to hold those pleats in place. Um, and then the next step is going to hold it in place even more. We've yeah. got four minutes. Oh, have we? Shall yeah. I just sh shoot down here then? Quick. Okay. And then I'll um, show the into place. Now. Okay. So we did, we did rather the challenge, Janice, this morning, saying let's, let's not just do one bag, let's do two. And just show some of the key features of each of the bags. So on this one, it is about this the beautiful pleating. And, and I think we can all agree the finished effect is really rather lovely. There you go. Looking very lovely. I think that little black dress, Janice, that would yeah, look cracking, wouldn't lovely. it? I thought how lovely it was. But um, also, tap pins out. You know, when you've got weddings and things to go for, clutch bags are so expensive. And if you make your own outfit, you can make the own bag. Well, absolutely, too, absolutely. I mean, this would be perfect for wedding season. So, that's sure. So out come those pins. Those millions of pins. pins. That's your pleats done. Okay, So nice. again, I'd press that again, but yes. you don't need to at this stage. Well, I would, personally, before I even put that on. So just to get them pleats in lovely. So then what you do, you put your interfacing on. Like so that so. interfacing is going to reinforce the pleats. Now, if at home you've got a pressing cloth, you can use that. Yeah. So would you like me to press? press that on. There you go. If you've got your Teflon or your non-stick sheet, now is a great time to use that. We haven't. So no. We'll just do <laughs> And then what's the next step then, Janice? Just well, while then I you press just, this. You just stain. Do Does you this like... fold under then? Is that both that sides done? That literally just done? goes in, yeah. It's really? ever so quick. It's ever so quick. The hardest part, it is the pleats getting them right. But then the flap, you have to have the interfacing with the flap. Okay. And everything. And you have to sew it down the one side. Oh, but you, after this, you put this What's on that? the actual... Well, you do that after you've attached... You literally tuck that inside the bag. If yeah. I just show it on it. So you've got, your, you've got your Velcro, then you've got the inside, and if you see, you just tuck that in, the oh, lining. Oh, OK. And of course, <laughs> because it's like, like that, it's not yeah. always... You need time to really... You're going to need a lot Velcro then. Over. We'd and better you give you Velcro. the details for the Velcro. So the Velcro, yeah. which is stick on... Oh, this has revolutionised my Velcro life. Um, this is your stick-on Velcro tape, and this is white, and it's 3 dollars You do not need to sew this in. Um, after it has been in place for 24 hours, it's permanently adhered. You've, you've got that, and you've got that, that wiggle room. Machine, that. Uh, but but you, no, but you don't need to, because it's going to be perfect. It's oh, going to be permanent. It's permanent. Yeah. I, I machine these down anyway. Uh, also in black. See, I use other these on my dog beds and on the mm. dog coats, and it's great because it's permanent. Three ninety nine because I hate sewing Velcro. T L G Q forty nine for it in black. It just get it in your stash. You're not gonna you're not gonna regret that at all. We've so got thirty you, seconds. Janice. So you just literally fold that in half. Yes. Cut that away. Yes. Put your lining in. Yes. Then edge stitch it. Yes. Like I've done with the binding. Create your own binding. Right. There. Oh, okay, that's then the you binding. do your flaps. Nice. Machine that flap down the one side on the back of the bag. Yeah. And then keep that one loose. And then put your Velcro there and there. And then. Fish brush brush is done. Ta da! <laughs> Dennis, thank you. Uh, you're off for a day with your grandkids. Yes, Enjoy. I am tomorrow. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, thank you so much. Archer. And then I'll meet next see you. week. Thank you. Mwah. 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 See now, you soon. Thank you ever so much. I'm going to turn that iron off. Right. Here we go. Now the book, like I say, it's about to sell out, so please do check out. Four books, physical books left. Nine of you have it in your basket. So at the moment, five of you, it's looking like you'll be disappointed. But so please, this is going to be fastest finger wins. Please check out your baskets with that. Right, let's start from the very, very top. So the bag that was made, da -da -da -da, this one here, beautiful. If you want to make that exact one, then this is with your Beth Studley fabric. It's the Amelie bag with the Beth Studley fabric, British designer, and I think she has excelled herself. 24.49 there. 
So you've got that beautiful floral there, a meter and a meter, and your magnetic clasp and your thread as well. You need to start checking out on that. It's been incredibly popular this hour. Then, now the next one is the one that Janice demoed with, which is your Rainbow Uptown, which is this one here, and a meter of this one and a metre of your candy floss pink. So two metres of fabric in each of these kits, 24.49 plus your thread, plus your magnetic clasp. And that's everything that you need. Add in a little bit of interfacing if you wish and you are good to go. Now the next one is your Katie Jane. This is new to me and I absolutely love this. Ever so pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous. A metre of that, a metre there. And then you've also got thread and you've also got your magnetic clasp. Now, a matching cl uh, clutch bag is over here. And half a metre here. And this is the one that Janice has just demoed. Half a metre, half a metre and your thread all in for 10.99. Wonderful. Um, now, the Amy Butler one, very, very popular as well. I just love the colorways on that. So that's your Amy Butler fabric. Half a meter, half a meter, multi-buyers on this. 12 pounds 49. QWGC 55 producible says there's loads of you with that in your basket. So we'll be running very low on that. Please check out your basket. You can check out as many times as you like, doesn't matter. Uh, now here we go. This is your other Katie Jane option in this beautiful, rich, warm red. And again, this is 10.99 for half a meter of the red, half a meter, half a meter, half a meter, and your thread all in there for 10.99. Q U G C 99. And then the last option over here, here we go, is your dashwood from the new flock range that we just launched this week. And you get half a meter of that, half a meter of the gray, and you also get your thread in there as well for 11.49. QWGC44. Lovely. So they are your options. Are you going to go for a matching, matching bag and clutch? Ooh, what are you going to do? Uh, now, after the break, we've got Jenny Smith back. And this time, she's a woman of many talents. She's uh, turning her hand to a little bit of free motion embroidery. She's going to make that really achievable for everybody. So if it's something that you've worried about, don't. She's going to show you how to do that. There's some liberty, why not? Absolutely, treat yourself. And it's perfect for Mother's Day. Uh, and we're gonna be bringing you beautiful ideas. Uh, and I uh, just absolutely love it. In fact, it was a gift that Jenny did make for her mum. She's even got the one that she made for her mum that she's brought in to show us. And she's gonna be showing us exactly how you can make that for you, for your mum, for anyone that you love. So check out your baskets while we go on a very quick break, change everything around, and we will see you in just a few moments. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Hi, I'm Lucy Brennan and these are my three top tips. My first top tip is to experiment. It's really about um, playing and using all the different features of your sewing machine. So for example, when I was quilting this quilt, I used um, a wavy quilting stitch, which gives a really lovely texture to the quilt. So it's worth having a play about and using um, scraps or little quilt sandwiches um, to try different things. My second top tip is about combining fabric. A lot of people um, like getting the pre-cuts, which are fantastic. That gives you a whole range of a collection, but it doesn't mean that you just have to use those together. It can be nice to mix them in with other fabrics that you've got in your stash, or mix them in with solids and create something really unique. My third top tip is sometimes you just need to go for it. You can't always plan everything out. So you might combine fabrics, be making a block, and it not look exactly how you wanted it to. But until you sew it together, you don't always know how it looks. And there's always a way of combining things and making it look right in the end. Love Patchwork and Quilting is the best-selling modern quilting magazine that shares your passion for fabric. We publish 13 times a year featuring must-make projects. 
essential techniques, interviews, news and reviews from the world of modern quilting. Every issue also comes with a free gift. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com. Make sure you tune in on Tuesday the 20th of February for two hours of brand new fabric. The journey starts at 10am when Lucy Brennan makes a quilt using the new map making inspired Meridian collection. From an exquisite map of the world panel to an all over compass print, we can't wait to see where Lucy goes with these. Our destination at 11am is the new Lemon Tree fabric range by Tilda making its on air debut. The bold blooms and playful details are sure to have you dreaming of summer. Imagine sitting on a patchwork picnic blanket wearing a pretty floral sundress and sipping a glass of homemade lemonade. Tilda's Lemon Tree will take you there. So meet us here on Tuesday the 20th of February at 10am for two hours of new fabric fun. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. I've got a tub of love for you this hour. Yes, I have indeed. Welcome back. Hello, thank you for your company again this hour. So this is a tub of love. This, uh, this whole project today has been inspired by Mother's Day's gift that Jenny Smith gave to her own mother. And here it is, this is the very one. And it says on it, uh, a tub of love. What does your mum keep in it? Oh, she's got it by the fireplace. Nicks and Nacks in it. <laughs> she will get it back. Jenny's mum, you will get this back. There we go. So we've got some, um, some kits for you so that you can make similar. And these are brand new. And the instructions are brand new. They haven't been in any of our magazines. They are brand new just for you today. And you can make, we reckon, nearly four. About four. If you, if, well, well, we'll talk you through how to make all of these. We'll show you in a minute. So they are your instructions. There we go. Now in this kit, you are getting oh, a bit of liberty, which we absolutely love. So you're going to get 12 five inch squares. And this is the blue version. I love this one. This has got one, my favorite liberty fabric in there. Hang on, look at the peacock feathers. It's my favorite one ever. So Jenny's in, designed this entire kit Chosen Liberty for that bit, a little bit of ex, something a little extra special. Uh, we've got two different threads in here. So you've got your black thread because you're going to be doing some embroidery. So it's nice for that to stand up. Uh, then you've also got your neutral colored thread there. So that that's going to blend with everything else. Now, what we've got in the kit is your washed linen, pre-washed linen in here, which is really lovely. Um, and you'll also get half a meter of that and you also get a half a meter of our spot on now That's in the stone color so that you can do your interfacing. This is quite a big kit here Then you also get your iron-on interfacing and you also get wadding which is under here And you get your bonder web That's a big old kit, isn't it? You get a lot. There's gonna be stuff left over You know that you can use again like your bonder. You're not gonna use all your bonder web So there's a lot in there. There's a huge amount in there. I think this is a fabulous big kit Wonderful. So that's $42.99. So Jenny put this together. Now, if you just want the Blue Liberty just by itself, we are very, very limited on it. When I say limited, I mean, we've got five of them. Now, each of these, they're all folded under, tucked under. They are five inch patchwork squares. And there they are. So like I say, $14.99, but they are incredibly limited. Check out your baskets if you want those separately. Now, maybe you want the whole rainbow, in which case go for this kit. And this one here has got, again, 20 of your Liberty 5-inch squares. Yeah, you could, you could, you could do a, a series of them and, and have them in rainbow order. It'd be beautiful. Again, you've got a half a meter of your pre-washed linen. You've also got a half a meter of your stone spot on. You've also got 
um, a thread for the fabrics and a thread to do your embroidery with. You've got your iron-on interfacing. You've got your bond web, so you can do your applique hearts. Uh, you've got your instructions, and you've also got your wadding. It's all in there for 42.99. Do we have any of those rainbow ones by themselves? No, no, no. They're just they're all in the kits. Okay, beautiful. All righty then. So without further ado. Let's get cracking. Hey, Hello. Jenny. Hey, nice, <laughs> nice pinny. Oh, thank you. Apparently, we knew how to make one. This is the dress. Yay! Looking good. <laughs> Love it. Um, now, your mother. Yes. Lucky lady. She must be very proud. I think. Yeah, she was really pleased when I made that for her, I guess. And it's nice because it's my handwriting as well. When you're doing the free motion embroidery, I guess it's a little bit. You know, you're writing with a sewing machine, but essentially it's a little bit of something from you as well, so that's nice. I can already hear some of our viewers saying, but it worries me, free motion worries me. You're going to put an end to all of that worry, aren't you? Yeah, it's a, it's a really amazing skill to have, and it's, there's so many creative possibilities with it, and I've taught it a lot. I've taught it to children from eight years old in Hang classes. Hang on, if an eight-year-old can do this, yeah. what are you scared of? Exactly. It's literally... When, once you've done this, the last time I taught it, I said to the people, I said, and you'll be like awake in bed tonight thinking of all these things you can do. Because when you go out shopping and you go into craft shops, there are so many projects now, cards, cushions, gifts, that the basis of it is free motion embroidery and all this kind of sketchy stitching, really. And they were, people were looking at me and then the lady came the next week and she was like, Jenny, I was awake at midnight. She said, <laughs> yes. I was thinking this of all these fault. little cards I could make and gifts. So it's it's... It takes a little bit of getting your head round. There's lots of ways to make it easier, which is why I've designed this kit with certain... Because some people teach it by putting the fabric into a hoop mm -hmm. and onto the machine. I've never been able to get on with that. So I do it my way. I, I do lots of pictures and cards and gifts in it, and it works fine. So hopefully it will make sense by the end of the hour. OK. Challenge accepted. OK. So first of all, what we're going to do is actually design the central panel. What I did was get the... A nice neutral cloth, really. So this is why the linen works really nicely for this. Yeah, now tell us about this linen, because you, you did choose this whole kit Jenny's put together herself. Um, thank you for doing that. And this linen you chose, why this linen? Again, it's a lovely neutral colour, so I think particularly with Liberty, it sets it off. Yeah. And it looks a little bit luxurious. It's not as flat. It kind of catches the light. I like that about linen, that... Um, when you look at it, you, you see different colours in it, and it doesn't fray too much either. So again, okay. it's, a, it's a wash linen that doesn't fray a great deal. And what we've done, I designed the measurements so that you can get two tubs out of the width of the fabric. Yes. And, and there's plenty left over as well because this, this linen's extra wide, so it would work as well with a normal 44-wide craft cotton, but you get a little bit more. So I think definitely with the kits, three or four tubs you could make. And the good thing is, once you learn the basics of how they come together, you could make bigger or smaller ones as well. Just oh, size nice. them up so or it's, down. It's up to you Because you just start off with a plate, which is from okay. I brought from my Yay. kitchen. Just in case. Um, but so that's... actually, you've raided your mum's house. <laughs> yes. You've raided your own house. Oh, um, and we're all good to go. Yes, OK. So, but first, first of all, what we're actually going to look at is how you prepare the central panel to go around the tub. And what you need to do is take your interfacing, first of all. So this is iron-on on one side and not on the other. It's kind of shiny, isn't it, on the, on the gluey yeah, side? Yeah, you can see the gluey side. And it's quite heavyweight. It's a little bit heavier than the one that I used in the previous tutorial. Yeah. But what this basically does is it stabilizes the linen. Right. So that when you then go on to do the decorative stitching, it doesn't gather up okay. around it. So it's all these are all tips and tricks to actually make the free motion part on the machine Amazing. as smooth as possible. And also because it's nice and smooth on the back, it kind of glides along as you're stitching. You see, I tried to do that once with a, with a decorative stitch on the front of a cushion, and I thought, well, I've got all these beautiful decorative stitches, I'll go for it. And I forgot to interface it, yeah. and it just didn't sit as well. So no. I think it's, it's, it's one of those things. But then you get into the, well, which is the right interfacing to use? and da, da, da. All of that demystified, because you get it in your kit. So you're not having to worry. Yeah, and you get, kit, you get oodles of this, so you can also make yourself some little test squares, which I'm going to do in a minute, and just get to grips with, with having a go. So what you want to do is put the, the glue side down onto the wrong side of your linen. Is the right and the wrong side easy to work out with your linen? 
It's not Does too it bad. You might see the odd raised little slub on the wrong side. A slub? A little tiny slub. Like there, you I've can never just... heard that word before. What's a slub? A slub in a tub. I'm very young <laughs> today. <laughs> Welcome to Sarangor. Maybe it's not a real world. I do have a reputation for making words up. A slub. Well, no, I'm going like with it. Like a little... Like I like a, that. It's not a fault. It's just that the, it's the, the fibres are slightly raised on the back there. If not, you'd have to look at your selvage and, and feel which is the right and the wrong side. I did it's this... A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a what, producer Paul? A lump? <laughs> or a thick place in yarn or thread. There, there you you're go. Right. No, it's a true word. You see, this is it. Welcome to semicolons. We use real words. So what I do generally when I'm using interfacing, particularly even on dressmaking, is I actually cut the interfacing first to okay. the right dimensions because otherwise you have to generally cut it slightly smaller right. than your cloth so that you don't have an overhang to okay. melt onto your ironing board. Whereas if you cut this first press it on to the wrong side of your linen and then use that as your pattern to cut round, yeah. then it's automatically going to be a little bit smaller than what you want. Okay. So could we have yes. the iron, please, yes, and we'll we press could. that on. Now, if you're worrying about bunging up your iron, then you can always grab yourself a Teflon sheet to put underneath. Yes. And you don't bung anything up. Would you like me to do that for do you? Do you want to do that? That yeah, would be wonderful. Go on, then. Okay, so if I show you this little panel here. I love this. It's gorgeous. That's with there. the blue Liberty, isn't it? Yeah. And it's brilliant. You get 25 inch squares. So actually I've just, and I've still got some remnants from these ones, but I, I used five. So I've still got another three tubs worth to use left. as well. And so the interfacing is obviously going onto the back to make this linen more structured for, for putting the stitching into it. And also then because it's going to stand upright, it also just gives it a little bit more body. Yeah. And, and this is lined as well, isn't it? So it's not just... Yeah, the lining, we've also put in the, the wadding because the one I did for my mum, actually, I didn't. I just did this process and then made the lining in the tub. But also, I've done a sample where you can put in some, some wadding in the middle just to give it a little bit more body as well. Or if you want a kind of a squishier tub to keep things in. Do you know what I think would look lovely with these? Is if you then get a plant. Yeah. And you could have it as like a sort of a, a lovely organic -y looking plant pot yeah, cover. Yeah, exactly. As well. That's it. Or you can put chocolates in, you can put nice bundles of fat quarters in to make it a lovely, it's just a lovely gift, isn't it? Whatever yeah. it would be. Yeah. I think we'd actually be lovely in the bathroom, these, wouldn't they? For yeah. all bits and bobs and Yeah, and the, and the flax linen is good because, like, it's, it's neutral, isn't it? It's like yeah. magnolia. It's kind of going to match any room, probably, as well. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's not like you're gifting someone you don't know if you're doing this for Mother's Day. At least you would have an idea, yeah. sort of, their preference of colourway. So, where that my mum loves blue, so the blue one would be absolutely perfect for me. But maybe, you know, your mum loves all the colours, then you can grab yourself the, the beautiful rainbow one. Yeah. So, we've got both. Well, I thought you could choose, look, if you oh. choose your five favourites before you. I get to that bit. So now that the interfacing's on, it's it means <laughs> you can rotary cut the excess away. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the correct size, which is, it's 21 and a half inches, just so that you get two out of the width. Right. And it's seven inches deep is the outside of the tub. And then the lining, it's on the instructions, but the lining is slightly deeper, so you get that nice little fold over at the top. Only five? Only five. That's really hard. And then you can go home and, and make your own oh. <laughs> with the rest. Do you know what? I might just go all greens with this one. Greens and blues. I'm going to put that red one back. Oh, decisions, decisions. I'm the most indecisive person, Jenny. I'll still be <laughs> decided at about one o'clock going... Mm. So, once we've cut this away, we're going to move on to the bonder web. So, okay. the only thing, if, pe if people are new to free motion stitching, it gets a little bit confusing because you've got the interfacing, which is only sticky on one side, which is to secure your base fabric, basically. And, and then you've got the bonder web, mm -hmm. or blazer fix, it gets called different things, which is when you peel back the top layer is essentially sticky on both it's sides. It's a sticky mesh, isn't it? Yes. So you can see that in there is where the mesh is. So you can obviously cut out as many hearts as you like and decorate it with as many. The only thing I would say is 
keep yourself a good half inch margin around the edges because obviously this the tub has then got to be constructed so you don't want to to be losing a, a, a part of your design so just bear in mind to keep that little area clear and what I did was I just drew some hearts freehand onto the smooth side of the bonder web and I didn't really want to make a template because I think the whole look of the tub is freestyle so I didn't want the hearts to I don't want people to get stressed out that their hearts have got to be perfectly symmetrical or anything or you can do stars whatever shapes that you want but I think it's just better probably just to draw them freehand okay um, what I do is once I've got it onto the smooth side once I've got the drawings I tend to cut out my bonder web a little bit rougher I don't go yes, straight to no, cutting it no, out no, no. first of all so to cut out the approximate shapes and get it onto the wrong side of the fabric because the more you start handling it if you start cutting out the perfect shape straight away that glue can start to come and get undone so that's it oh and you're fussy cutting it as well well you know the middle of a nice I thought I'd make the effort <laughs> Jenny just thought you know as it's liberty I as did it's that you, on that, you know. that lovely blue heart there actually because it was such a beautiful symmetrical design when there I was cutting it up. There will be people shouting going Natasha come on you've gone right in the middle of that square you could have saved bits no. So we can cut these and then you can make all your lovely hearts or I did think it would be nice I was thinking like for exam results or something, you could do like reach for the stars oh, and do nice. little stars yes. along the basket or yes, birthday yes. wishes, whatever you fancied really. So we'll cut these out. I love Bonder Web. Just had to double check I've done it on the right side there. <laughs> oh my word. I think the key for me with applique and free motion embroidery is helping yourself out before you get to the sewing machine so if you've got that extra layer here then that's going to stop your fabric from puckering up if your applique designs are, are actually glued bonder webbed into place before you start stitching then again you're just making life easier for yourself set yourself up for success yes. you know why, why don't we do that more yeah uh, a little bit of a little bit of prep and then we can now that it's fused onto the back you can then go in and obviously cut out the shape perfectly then. And you may want some smaller scissors when you get just into the, the points of the heart there. But you've still got, um, you can definitely use, from a five inch square, you've, you've still got lots of scope. Oh no, you absolutely have. I'm just trying to decide which bit to go on here. Now, if you are after more Liberty Charm Packs, then I've got two more for you. They're, they're little ones. They're only um, two and a half inch ones. They're five centimetre ones. But do you know what? Liberty's Liberty and it's under 10 pounds. Bargain. Uh, 9.99 for your, well, you get 36 of these. They're two and a half inches. So they're half the size, well, quarter of the size, really. Yeah. Um, but you, it's still, the other one, the blue one is sold out by itself. So I'll just, I'll get rid of that off the desk. Um, so if you if you're after if you you know you just need a bit of liberty in your life there you go and then I've got ah oh, I love this one too oh yeah. yeah no that one looks beautiful isn't it mm. I'll show you as well at home can imagine that in the middle of the heart can't you yeah It'd be beautiful so W B B Y fifty three well you might just need some liberty you know. We're not here to judge. Exactly, you can make cushions. We're just, we're just here to... Uh... I mean, even if you want to make some really quick birthday cards, I sometimes literally just bond a web mm. my Liberty stash, which is quite extensive. Do you know now? Peel, really? it, peel the back off and just iron that onto a blank card as it is. You don't even necessarily need to stitch it. Would, you know, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful yeah. easy On a bit of craft gift. card or something yeah, would be lovely, exactly. wouldn't it? So we're getting there, aren't we? We've got one, two. They're looking very pretty. Look, we'll start to lay them out on here. And there's no right or wrong way as to the gaps, really. So again, so no, if you get panic, really carried away, you. you can put 50 hearts on there if you've got the time to sew around them all. When I'm first teaching free motion embroidery, I did it. I used to teach mum and baby sewing classes, so the mums bring the babies and oh, they used to lovely. kind of sleep. And I taught the mums how to sew oh, until they could move yet. around, and then it got a bit dangerous. But I used to teach so the mums used to sleep. Then, thank goodness. <laughs> I used to put all the babies goodness. in the middle and teach the mums how to sew. And we we used to do applique and free motion embroidery 
quite early on. And um, I, one lady, the first week, she came with an, an octopus design. And I was like, oh, no. Oh. Well, maybe just start with something with fewer lines to kind of yeah. work in something and out. I mean, it's not quite circular yeah. and doesn't have lots of uh, tenderly things. Yes. So... Marilyn we'll in West this. Sussex says, I'm loving the programme this morning. Thank you for such an inspiring show, says Marilyn. Ah. In, um, well, isn't it Chichester? Very nice. Very nice part of the world. So we'll cut this, these ones. And then we can peel. Are you good at, have you got longer nails than me, Natasha? Uh, I'm happy to peel. <laughs> and if not, then I, um, I just scratch the back with a pin. Yes. There's always a way. There is a way. So peel off. And I sometimes also, you can just go in and make a little tear because actually you won't tear the fabric. And, and you know if that side is now smooth that it's, that it's come away. That one's worth to do. And that one. And we'll there just you go. cut this one. Maybe we'll cut this Do you want one. me to cut that, that out? Okay? Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah. we'll just arrange them. However you wish. However we fancy. I just, I just think it's... Um, you know, you know, being a mum now, obviously I keep I keep all the things that Freddie makes, and it's it's nice when actually at a stage where you make stuff that's actually really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going, oh, oh yes. Yeah, I've ma I've made my kids do storage tubs or something similar to this for teachers as well. Oh, as a it's thank a nice you. end of term. End yeah, of term. Yeah. Thank and you. And because you it? can personalise the message and something like this on a teacher's desk, they could. The pens. Yeah. Oh, what a great idea. Or any anything they wanted to pop in. So you can lay it out, play with the arrangement a little bit, and then it's really quick to fuse. Now you only need a couple of seconds on each one with. The oh, right, yeah, no, I can do that too. Are you happy with your placement, Jenny Smith? No, speak now or forever. Yes, Hold so like piece. I just said, I should I was just, I'm keeping, <laughs> just, I was just I'm keeping clear of the edges and I think that's fine. You happy? Yep. Happy, happy? So it'd be nice to see because th there's lots of different options, isn't there, what people could do with all the different colours. Well, Spots, I mean, stars, hearts. And the liberty as well, you just can't help, oh, I couldn't just help but fussy cut a little bit and just find that little favourite bit that you've got in your fabric. Yeah, or butterflies. Mm -hmm. once, I, once I started writing the instructions, I was thinking, OK, there's so many creative possibilities, really. So what I want to show you next is actually how to do the stitching okay. on the machine. And what, when I was taught how to do this, it's in a sense it's muscle memory because that's a really good way of putting it yes you are those those shapes in your head you familiarize yourself with them so i always start when i teach this forgetting people just to write their name on the sewing machine because your signature is, is so familiar helps if i take the back of you you know those shapes yes then try and write your name like i did on the little sign on there um and and then that will give you confidence to be able to do it. And it always looks a, a lot better, like the, the second or the third time that you go over it. So I think free motion embroidery is intended to, to be stitched over a couple of times, like you're you stitching, filling in the gaps, really. Well, also, then it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And it is, it is that look that actually you're going for. Yeah, exactly. If you think sketchy stitching, then I think that helps people feel like it doesn't have to be too perfect. And if you want to practice your shapes, then actually if you hold your pencil upright and doodle, because that's essentially what your needle's doing, you know, you're not at that angle, you're more oh, like that, top, then, yeah. then you can kind of do that on a piece of paper as well. Nice. So what I've done is I've just done a little test square mm -hmm. with some spare interfacing and linen, but obviously you could use a scrap of other fabric that you don't mind about so much, and then you can have a little go. Also, it's your darning foot. Yes. On the well, machine. Well, they call them different things, don't they? Free, Free motion, motion foot, foot. Darning foot. It, it, yeah, wadding, batting. It, you know, it's one of those things, isn't it? You go, oh, which one is it? So same, when you put difference. this onto the machine, you have to take away the entire shank of your normal foot to, to position this free motion foot. Now, if you are in that situation, we're going, but Jenny, I don't have one of those. Does that mean I can't do it? Uh, we've, got, we've got a set of three here, which has a darning foot. It's got one for echo stitching on, yes. and then it's got an open-toed one, which is the one that you've got yes. in here. So it's three different feet uh, that we've got, plus, like you say, where the, where the ankle yeah. is, it, all of that replacement. So it's, it's, a, it's an amazing one to have, and that's the detail on your screen at the moment. So don't feel like you can't do this. And once you get 
once you get it, like you say, you're going to be awake at night thinking, what am yeah, I going yeah. to do? And free motion quilting as well. Yeah. Once you get into that, that's amazing. And then all that you need to do, some machines vary. Some come with, with, the, with the foot with a little plate that covers up the feed dogs. Or you need to get rid of the feed dogs here so that you haven't got a grip. Because essentially, the needle and the cloth is moving in any direction so yeah. so you don't want any grips so on this machine here it's just a little lever at the side and that drops those feed dogs and that drops the feed dogs okay but you're right some do have a darning plate that just goes over the top yeah and, and, you, and you can buy silicone that sits over the top as well as all kinds of gadgets so i've used the black thread for yes. the writing because it gives definition it doesn't matter what color thread that you use and then what you're going to do is Pop the needle in. And the stitch length, in my machine instructions, it says that you should set your stitch length to zero when you're doing free motion quilting, but actually it doesn't... Really? Yes. Ooh. But... I didn't even know it could go to zero, to be honest. <laughs> didn't you? No, okay. no, I've never got yeah, well, If you far. try and do normal sewing with it on zero, it doesn't move forward because well, it's, it is, it's, it's zero. It's yeah. zero, and so it's just stuck there. That's why I've never tried it. <laughs> um, but... The stitch length is determined by how you move, okay? Yes. So this is what it's kind of getting your head round. So if you're really nervous, then you'll end up doing teeny tiny stitches. And then if you get a bit carried away, you'll get longer stitches. And that is, again, it's just a little bit like learning how to drive because you, you're controlling the foot pedal, you move in your hands. You know, don't expect to be able to do it perfectly straight away. It's definitely a skill that if you, if you think, right, I'm going to make one of these tubs and then I'm going to make another, you will crack it. It's, yeah. it's, it's practice and it's confidence as well. Kids always just sit down and like, yeah, this is easy because they have no inhibitions. So just pesky eight year olds <laughs> yeah. showing us all up. I mean, okay. really, how dare they? <laughs> okay, so it's telling me that the feed dogs are down. So if you can see, I don't have to stop and turn my needle because actually my fabric can move in any direction. You nice. see. Oh, because there's no grip from the underside. Yeah. And that's what those feed dogs okay. would do. Would be to so grip if I'm really feed. nervous and I'm going like this, I'm going to get teeny tiny stitches, which is still fine. And then if I get really carried away, I can do really big stitches, okay? Like that. Uh, my top thread has just yeah. snapped. Whilst you pop that back in. And um, the other thing, of course, is if you're really nervous, is it okay to draw it out with a water erasable pen? Yes. Okay. There yes. You go. Absolutely. <laughs> That's just, I can, I can hear the sigh of relief uh, from those of you who go, well, never mind these eight-year-olds that are, you know, super good at doing this. What about me that feels a little bit more nervous about it? I think, um, I think the, the thing about your name to give you confidence is just because those shapes are quite familiar in your head. That's where it's nice to start with. But absolutely, you can, you can do write it on first and try and follow the line if you want to do. But you said, Paul, did you do some free motion embroidery when you did your, um, your sewing quarter square? Yeah? So producer Paul, who'd never done any sewing in his life, okay. went straight and we, we each had to make a, a, a block for a quilt. Yeah. And he did a, a, he got some pens and did a, a skull and you know, like the the Day of the Dead skulls. Yeah. Like one of those and coloured wow. it all in with... Is this with... the one that's in... Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with, and have, um, have a good look. Yeah, you'll see which one's his. And then he he, um, he free motion embroidered it on. So he's not scared. He's like kids, isn't he? He's not scared. Just goes straight and does it. That's just a single row of doing oh, yeah. the shapes. What I find is... So you can swivel around now because the needle's in. Is I always think it looks nicer once you've echoed that shape again so not trying to stay exactly on your line but no, I, that's I, the charm of it isn't it yeah and I, I just find that you it has a little bit more character it's it, it always looks a bit more wibbly wobbly when you've just got one row of stitching by the time you've gone into it a second time or a third time it starts to get real definition and also it looks like it was meant to be like that and some people prefer as, as you as you're swiveling it around some people prefer when you can see where you're going next, so stitching this way, and other people work backwards. So just try and figure out, you know, how you're most comfortable, really. Like so. So you're just following 
the lines. Now, if you want, at the beginning and the end, you could, like here, I've left a long thread when I've started. Mm. So you could then pop that onto a hand sewing needle, pop it through to the other side at the back and tie it off. But my teacher told me that life's a bit too short for that, yeah. really. Because like again, <laughs> because we'd get on. this is very much the style of, of the tub. So I, I just tend to try and do a few small stitches in one place. So well, if you machine it zero, it's not going to go anywhere. No, exactly. And then when you come out, just you can then just snip. So who taught you this? Because you, you had, you know, you had quite the teacher for your dressmaking. Well, a lady called, I did, I spoke to a textile artist called Janet Brown, who lives near me in Addingham. She's amazing. She did all the big collages for the opening of the Tour de France when oh, it wow. was in Leeds. And she does a lot of, she hand dyes all her fabrics and then makes these beautiful pictures. And she does maps. So she does like from Yorkshire, from Ilkley to Cornwall. And then she'll stitch like details of the journey along the way and things, oh, personal significance yeah. to people. So it was her that said her teacher didn't let her stand up until she could write her name perfectly. And I'm not that strict when I teach you, but I think it's a good place to start. And also I was like, do you finish off? And she was like, just, just snip. Especially if you've got good threads, you can go in and just snip where you want to be. So, um, because you have done your name perfectly, Jenny, I'll let you move on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, the, the foot, I was just going to say, the foot that I've used on, on here, there's different little attachments. It's got the open toe yeah, here. Yeah, now this is personal preference. Why do you like this one? I like that one because I can see exactly what ah. my needle is doing. Some of them come enclosed mm. and that means that if you were doing like a, a plique or you've got some raw edges then it wouldn't get caught in that so you sometimes they have an enclosed circle on them and otherwise you can get a larger plastic disc and that's kind of for the echo quilting yeah. and everything but again it's just it's quite a nice kit to get I was quite excited when mine came just just to play around with and you can also adjust this little spring on the side here so that this can sit a little bit closer to the fabric okay. or not. The one downside to free motion quilting, or one thing that sometimes it's easy to forget, is to put the presser foot down because whether it's up or down, it doesn't always clamp the fabric. Right. So sometimes you can be you can forget to do that and stitch away merrily, and it looks fine. And then what you'll end up on the back is you'll get those little birds' nests, oh, and it, yes. it'll eventually jam. So and if that's that happens, just because you haven't put your foot down, yeah. so that it hasn't engaged the tension. You haven't put the presser foot down. Some yes. machines won't let you stitch until that presser foot is okay. down. Okay. Well, that's um, good. Mine, <laughs> mine tells me off Does almost it? as much as producer Paul. It tells me off. Okay. So it won't let me do it. Right. But some do. Okay. So yeah, your machine will be. It'll show you what to do. Right. Okay. So we've got that. Yes. And essentially what I did then with the lettering is I started here mm -hmm. with my A and then just took, so because I was doing a double or a triple stitch on this letter here, it was nice and accentuated. And then the in-between line, I didn't want to have to keep stopping and starting. So I left, I did it as a chain of writing, but then I just went with a single right. around the heart, which again, because it's bonder webbed on, is gonna work really, really nicely. Yeah. And then continued down. So I did, I could do all of that in one continuous stream. Nice. Obviously, if you've got eyes, letter eyes with dots and things that need doing, you can, you can go back in mm. afterwards and, and, and just do a little accent there. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. Or you could always do uh, the top of your eye, you could do a little heart shape for the dot, can you? And then it yeah. would be echoing those. Do you remember at school going through a stage of always putting a heart over the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, There's some people that still do. <laughs> well, I, I'm Jennifer, if I'm in trouble. And so, no one obviously calls me Jennifer. No, no, right. clearly I'm very well never, there. Never, never, never. But I was Jenny with a Y for years, and then I had this sudden teenage thing, like when you get a signature that I yes. was going to be Jenny with an I, because that would be a bit different. So then I think I started doing lots of fancy things. And now I've just had to, because then you have a signature, and then that's yeah, it, that's isn't it? it? Yes, so then I've absolutely. always been Jenny with an I since then. Well, that was the thing. I mean, when I got married, and you have to you have to do your passport, and that was the first time I'd ever actually signed my name as, as McCarthy, was so I could go on holiday. And no, I didn't put a heart on my passport, <laughs> but, it was just, but then I'm stuck with that because that's now on my passport. Yeah. So I can't change it. So that was it. That was my signature done. 
there. It's that sort of thing. Right, next. So you can see as well on this, you haven't got, because this is on the back, it hasn't gathered up nice. around the stitching. So that's why you do your interfacing. And again, that's coming in your kit. It's a whopper of a kit, actually, this. So, it, you know, everything is, everything is good because you've done that interfacing on there. So once you've played around with your panel and you're happy with it and you think that it's finished, you then just pop it right sides together and pin and then... I, need, I just need to set the machine back up to well, tell my you what, normal you do foot. That. I'll go look at stuff okay, over there wonderful. and I'll come back to you. Okay. Now, uh, Jenny's put these kits together for us. Thank you very much, Jenny. And this has been inspired by the tub that she made for her mum. This is the very tub that started the whole thing. And this was her tub of love for her mum for Mother's Day. So a perfect Mother's Day gift. And if you get it now, you've got time to actually make it for Mother's Day. I mean, shock horror, you've actually got time to do it, which would be fabulous. We've got two different kits for you. Now, um, this is the rainbow kit over here. And look, so you've got these, over half of this is gone. So you've got 25-inch squares. They're all, they're all folded over there. They're all, they are five-inch squares there. Choosing which one to work with was actually the hardest thing to do there. Uh, so you're getting those, all Liberty, Tana Lawn, gorgeous. So that you can bond web those on. Well, we've put bond web in helps doesn't it so that you can interface your linen we've put interfacing on and that's medium weight so we've even picked the right the right one uh, and then you've got a half a meter of your lovely lovely washed linen and then you've got a half a meter of your stone spot on for your lining and then you've got a thread to sew that with a thread to do your embroidery with and of course full instructions because you know that's how we roll here for 42.99 gorgeous now the other kit has got blue instead of the rainbow. So essentially everything else is exactly the same. You're getting the same linen, you're getting the same line and you're getting the same interfacing, the same bond web, the same instructions, the same thread. And then you've also got obviously your beautiful blue, which is gorgeous, 42.99, PTGC 99. So all your instructions, all written out, step by step, and you are good to go. There you go. Step by step, easy. And also, as I always say, you know, when you, when you watch one of these shows and you buy, just make a note of the date, and then you can go to YouTube. All of our shows go up onto YouTube live as it's all happening. Um, and then you can watch them back whenever you like. We don't take them down, they're up there. So you can then watch them back. Now, maybe you want to go all out and, and get um, all sorts of different threads. So this thread pack here is your Gutterman kit. This even has one of the best uh, stitch rippers. It's got this little bit on here, which is kind of rubbery, looks like a beehive. But then once you've ripped your stitches, it, you can just rub them out and it pulls them all out. You've got your stitch counter down there and then you've got all your basic shades that you're gonna need. You've got lots of neutrals, you've got your blacks, your navies, your greys, your darks in there, and of course that lovely red, all in there. So this is a great starter kit, I think. Um, and that's 1999 OEGQ03. Now, Let's have a look at the autumn collection. Now, these are metal threads. So these are going to be great for your embroidery. And look at the colours we've got in there. So these are the autumn. So if these are your autumnal tones that you love, maybe you've gone with the rainbow um, liberties, then they're going to work beautifully with those. Or maybe they're just the colours that you like. Hey, who knows? Uh, but then maybe you might be getting super excited because someone said spring might be on its way. I don't know who, but apparently might happen then there you go for due supporters it's not it's going to be winter it's not game of thrones winter is not coming we're not going to have like a seven year winter it's fine 12.99 and they are your spring colors we well, see that's just cheery that just makes me think yeah lovely beautiful right Jenny, over and I think to if you, you were going to buy one of these in Liberties, it would probably be quite expensive. Well, I would imagine it might be a little bit more. <laughs> and yes. not be spokes. So Absolutely. I think this is the and key. have that personal <laughs> touch. That's the beauty here. Okay, so I have put my machine back to normal. I've got the regular foot back on. And the key is to remember to raise your feed dogs back up when you've oh, been doing your yeah, free motion. Oh, yeah, you're going nowhere. Yeah, you will get there and you'll be thinking, and my machine's broken, I'm sending it back. And then, <laughs> because it just doesn't 
do anything. So on this machine, you've got to raise them back up and then you've got to move the hand wheel forward and you will see them reappear. And then it clink, uh, clinks in. Yes. Um, and also, presumably, to increase your stitch length off zero. Yes. Is also going to help. Yes. So now I am using a, a half inch seam allowance. Uh, I'm back to a, a regular stitch length and I've got the nice colour back in that actually coordinates with the top. Which you chose. So we'll just check. So on this, on the exterior of the tub, you're sewing this seam all the way down. Mm -hmm. When you create the lining piece, you just leave a gap about where I've put those pins really, which is what you pull the entire tub through at so the end. Got, so it's you've just got a bagging out yeah. gap in the yes, lining. In the lining so that you don't have to put it into the, into the circular base. But on here actually, you just stitch all the way down. Secure it. it. So do you go all the way to the end or do you yes. just yeah, okay. Yeah, and you need to make sure it's nice and secure at the ends as well. Like so. And then you can just go in and press that seam open. That's okay. Yeah, I can do that for you. And what I've done is then cut around my plate which is about seven inches I'm sure most people have a seven inches ish I was trying to make it as easy as possible otherwise you can obviously just now yes get your compass and I had the Fiskar <laughs> circle cutter okay on. that would have done it then you'd know exactly yeah. what it was <laughs> this was me at home doing this prep when I first made the basket so you cut yourself a circle and then that's obviously going to go into the bottom there so if you want What's sometimes easier is obviously you've already got your seam here. You can mark yourself a halfway point opposite there if you want to do, and then also mark these points. And do you so do you that on just, the base? Can, yes, not on the top. Thank you, <laughs> Natasha. No, that's okay, just discreetly. It was a very early Helping. start this morning. No one know. <laughs> well, you drove down from Yorkshire this morning, didn't I you, did. crazy lady? <laughs> I did. I'm at Stitches tomorrow at the NEC, seeing oh, lots of do. nice crafty things. So we came yeah, this morning and that. stay tonight. Yeah, it should be brilliant. Yeah. Lots of more ideas for kits and projects. So if you mark your four points, yep. and then obviously you can do the same and finger press can I just the quickly points ask, on your circle. Did you, do, presumably, did you measure round the circumference of your plate to know how long yes, you make bit of, your... Pythagoras. <laughs> everyone loves, everyone loves, yeah. 3.1. Well, yeah. I thought if it's a seven inch two. plate, then <laughs> 21 inches, 0.5 for a seam allowance. And, and it's about right. And it is, it, okay. it fits. So you can, you can finger press your points on here as well. But it does, it, it's really not that hard to then fit in. Well, it's only because earlier you said uh, you might want to make other sizes. Yes. So it's just, yes. if you're going to do that, then you will need to just measure around the outside, the circumference of your of your bowl dish, whatever. Yeah, or and just, and just add your seam allowance. Yeah. And, and then you're away. So that's why it's, and again, you can e easily alter the depth of the basket as well. So once you've got those lined up, you can simply start to pin so you don't interface the bottom the base i didn't because it's the lining's going into it oh, as yeah, well course, and it's yeah. nice and soft but you could do if you wanted to and then you'll match up these points like so and really it's a little bit like setting in a sleeve in your dressmaking in that you just have to i just keep going at equidistant points so i kind of yeah. eyeball that now i've got the fullness on the top here and and then pin halfway so just keep finding and then those just mid finding points. that mid points, and they get smaller and smaller. Yeah, to work your way around. But you've got those. It's those having those um, those quarter marks, isn't it? That yeah. just makes it easy. So you know exactly where you are. For goodness sakes, don't start at one end having not marked any of these, and then just work your way around because you'll end up in a right old pickle. And if you get a little gather, then it is only on the bottom of the container as well. So it's not on the outside so if you stuff it with enough beautiful things then uh, no one's going to look at the never face. Ever see. <laughs> That's I'm just right. going to go and grab the, the original one well we said that producer Paul I said that earlier you could put you could put a, a nice flower in there for your, for your mum 
Oh, tulip, tulips would look lovely in there. Yeah. It's a, it's a perfect size. So that's all. Oh, producer Paul is going, no, 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 not real flowers, Natasha. I want you to make kanzashi flowers. Oh, wow. I mean, he's going all out. Liberty, Liberty his... flowers. Oh, Liberty kanzashi flowers. Oh, my word. It's going to be a busy weekend. Well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> when you get home. <laughs> oh, no, you see, producer Paul, he's very close to his mum. He's like, she's worth it. OK, so when you go back to the machine now, if you have got a quarter inch foot, that's quite useful if you're a quilter because you can put that black guide on the bottom, if not edge of the foot and a 3.0 stitch length and just go slow so that you've got enough time to ease it and stitch around it. Nice. We've got about 10 minutes just so that you know. Okay. So if you want, you could just be having a little look at that as well, because oh, that's yeah, where yeah, I've just, goodness. I've taken a little bit of the wadding yes. for the lining. So I've done, repeated the project, but I've actually just quilted that with the walking foot oh, to, okay. to create a lining with a little bit more structure. So if when you want that to do goes that. in, you're going to have to turn this now inside out, aren't you? To... Yes. Oh no, because you turn it, you've got the turning. You've got the turning point in the side of that yes. one. So all I did was have this laid out like that. Yes. And put my walking foot on and just stitch through at regular intervals. Can, you, can we see that there? So it's quilted. So that's going to give it extra strength. You get the wadding in your kit. So not only are you getting your bond web and your interfacing, you're also getting the wadding. And that's your wadding in there, which just gives it that extra strength and standy up the ability yeah i think i was thinking in my head as well like i've i've bought like toy storage tubs and things like that which have got a bit more struck the squishy on the sides aren't they so you could size it but up they're so expensive I know. To buy. <laughs> <laughs> so the same principle yes we reckon that you could get in. okay so definitely two whole everythings um then po possibly three if you decide to use a different base, then you can get four. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes, at the size that Jenny's done it. But I think, actually, I like the idea of having different, different sizes going on. And the main thing is you've got your liberty in there, so you can, you know, you can, you can decorate these as your heart desires. You do, however, need to start checking out, please. Um, these are brand new for us today. Jenny put these together specially for us. She even went and raided her mum's house for the one that she made her, which gave her the inspiration in the first place. And your mum just keeps her knickknacks in it. I'd like these in the bathroom. Yeah. With, uh, you know, cotton buds and things in. Be lovely. So I'm just gently easing my way around. It's nice that the linen on the main panel is already interfaced as well, because actually at this point it could get a little bit flippy when you're floppy trying to construct the basket, but because you've got that on the underneath here, so I'm easing the circular base onto it, it, it just sews much nicer as yeah. well. Nobody wants flippy floppy fabrics, Jenny. No. They just don't. Interfacing bonder web and a darning foot, and I'm a, a happy person in it's my your happy studio. Place. Yeah, it That's is. It. Because do not you interrupt. can kind of make anything up that you want to do. Perfect. Like that. I, think, I just think this is really charming and really lovely. And nobody else is going to have anything like it. That's, that's, the, that's the beautiful thing. So in terms of pressing, oh yes, you could get your tailor's ham or you could pop a bit of a towel or something in here if you wanted to. I mean, I found it, this linen's really lovely and kind of behaves itself really. If you wanted to go in and just press that seam that you've just stitched, you could, but it is essentially going to be on the bottom there. Mm. And the other thing is if you wanted to just clip the curves a little bit, but really it's very, very pliable. It, no, it is, isn't it? it? It behaves itself. So you've now got your exterior all lovely decorated mm -hmm. and attached to the bottom. You do the same with your lining. But can I just show here, even if you've, um even if you've quilted it, it's the word, there's still a gap there for your turning through. Yes. And the reason that I designed this to be a little bit taller when you're cutting it out, it's on the instructions, is so that you get the little contrast at the top if you want without actually having to yeah. fold it over. So when they're ready, you then want to turn one of them 
inside out. So if we turn the line in inside out and then just pop the tub inside. So this is right sides together. So this together. is right sides together and we'll match the side seam like so. And then we will pin around the top. You'll be able to stitch around this in one mm -hmm. and then all you have to do is pull it through the gap. Jenny, I've been thinking, I, I know, steady on. Um, we've been saying for Mother's Day, but Easter, Oh, yeah. it with Easter eggs. Yeah. And no. you could do some sweet little bunny silhouettes out of the Liberty, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Or butterflies or... Beautiful. That nice, there's those nice yellows, aren't there? Well, yeah, they're all they spring colours. That's the thing. Liberty is just amazing because it looks, looks lovely with everything, however you do doesn't it? it? Yeah. However you do it. <laughs> Definitely. And even if you've got some denim left over from your pinafore, you could make a denim trug, couldn't you? You could. Tub. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm just that's thinking of these all as fit a... nicely around the top. It's probably minutes. useful if we now, in order to get in to stitch that, just because it's becoming smaller and smaller, is if we actually just take the free arm off the front of the okay. machine. Okay, right. So if you slide that away, and then you can just fit that nicely underneath. So as if you were underneath. doing a sleeve with your dressmaking, yeah. just take it off. Yeah, and I would normally start where I have join the seams mm -hmm. and then I just know that that's definitely meeting up there. You could do a super big size one and put your toilet rolls in your bathroom in them, couldn't you? Yeah. That'd be nice. And if you want, if you've got other, you can put wadding inside or the one hour basket phenomenon that lots of people make with, with the, like the fusible foam, the bozzle oh, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that inside as well. So there are work. lots of ways. Once you've got the patterning, you've got all your measurements and you know what you're doing, you can, yeah. you can then play and make and it And you your could own. quilt your outside if you wanted. I mean, I, I just popped it on the line in here because I was doing the free motion on the front. But if you wanted to do that, you would do your free motion stitching first. And then you could also put a layer of wadding behind it. How old's it. your daughter now? She is um, 10. So, oh, OK. You're coming up for some fun, um, some fun years. But teenage bedrooms... All yeah. their makeup and their clutter and their bits and bobs. Oh yeah, she's got she she's already more organised than me. She's got things for her hair and her, really? all that. Yeah, yeah. Because so apparently one hairbrush just ain't going to cut <laughs> it. You need at least fifteen, according to my my teenage nieces. Yeah. And she still she does well. Who doesn't like a homemade gift? Absolutely. You know, like she's a little bit at that stage now where I'm not as confident to make her clothes because she's as long as she's picked the fabric, she's fine. Okay. But, um, but otherwise any other projects you know. <laughs> so if you have it like that, so that's all now stitched together, and then you literally just want to start to turn everything through your gap. Beautiful. And this one's a little bit, I'm always quite skinny with my gaps. Oh, you see, I go the other way. Because yeah. <laughs> only because, you know, I, I know that I'm a little bit ham-fisted sometimes going in. So I do just like to make sure that I've got It'll enough. Come through nicely. I'm and you'll get, at this hands, stage, but... you'll get a few creases in the interfacing, but nothing that a pressing cloth. If only we had a nice muslin <laughs> pressing cloth from the previous show that, you know, you could use at that point. Like so. It's like countdown. It's like the, the sewing bee, this. Yeah. And you know you've only got a few seconds left. Nearly there. So it's going to look a little bit crumpled. That's all right. But you will be able to see. That then At that, what page would you press then once it's all in through and together? Yeah, I'd like to, like, I'd want to just have a little squiz at it now to know that I'm, I'm nearly there, that I haven't missed any gaps anywhere that my seams are all joined up. I can tell that that's going to work nicely in the quiltings on the inside. So you could then, the, the only gap that I've got is now quite far down in the lining. So you can just do a little slip stitch there. You could even just press that close and, and machine it because it is going to be yeah. on the inside. And then it just needs a lovely press and then it will magically transform into that. <laughs> so a quick, yeah. as I'm here. I don't have a pressing cloth, I'm afraid. 
was yours. It's okay. Or if... That's it. You can just go around. It looks fab, doesn't just it? just want to have a peep at what this one. <laughs> I haven't seen this print before on the end. Ooh. Nice. So I'm coming back to sewing quilting How are you? with the um, well because I work with Liberty on their quilting cottons. Yes. So we are the, the their new collection, Cottage Garden. Because <coughs> you launched them for us, didn't you? Yeah. Here. Yeah, and I, I'm designing the quilts for them now and everything and the projects. <gasps> Good on so you, girl. I've made a few quilts that have gone off. They've been travelling. They went off to Australia, and I don't what? know where they are now, but they're they're coming back. So hopefully early March, if not before, then all the new quilting weight cottons will wow. be coming. So there's some lovely florals in there, but there's, there's some new, some of them are like the Liberty, the little conversation pieces that they do. Some of their prints are in, on the quilting weight cottons as well. So do you know what? I would probably preview. get my ham out or get oh, the yes. of my, I don't know where it's gone. We've hidden but it. There it is. So, you know, you will press it better than I have, but we're there. And then if you want to, obviously, that can fold down as well, either or, because you've got the contrast. So you do get the stone in the kit for that contrast, so you can, like you say... Press it down, yeah. Jenny, thank you. You're welcome. Fabulous. There you go. Mother's Day, sorted. Chocolates, sweets, flowers. Fabric. Fabrics. That's what I'd want. Yeah. <laughs> A big bundle of Liberty yeah, fabrics in my... Yeah, uh... <laughs> so. so, you see, I always have to think, well, my mum would, would have chocolates. Yeah. That is just gorgeous. Thank you. Well, all right, I can't wait you. to have you back now. Especially when you're bringing all liberty yes, it's wonderful. with you. Um, I'm going to go and show everyone. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Fab. Right. Oh, I'm feeling all inspired. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at the rainbow one first. So if you want to create your own with your rainbow. Now these are 25 square inches. Five inch squares rather. Get that right there. And you get the whole rainbow going on there. You really need to check out your baskets on that because otherwise you will miss out. So please check out your baskets. In this kit, you get your instructions. You get half a meter of your linen, half a meter of your lining fabric in that stone spot on. You get two different threads, one for your embroidery, one for construction. You also get your iron-on interfacing. You also get your bond web so you can do your applique and you get your wadding so that if you do wish to reinforce it as Jenny did today, you absolutely can. That is all in for $42.99. So you can make between two and four tubs with this which means if you're making four, it's coming in at a little over £10 a tub. Well, you'd pay a lot more than that for anything with Liberty on actually in Liberty, wouldn't you? Now, the other option over here, and bearing in mind, you're going to have um, some Liberty scraps left over here as well. This is your blue range. Love these. Again, $42.99. Look, I'm just showing my favourite one. How beautiful it is. Jenny's put this all together for us. So you're getting your bonder web for your applique, iron-on interfacing at the correct weight. Um, you get your two different threads. You get your half a metre of your linen, a half a metre of your, um, your spot-on lining, plus full instructions, plus your wadding as well. That is a massive kit coming to you for just $42.99. To be honest, to get that with the Liberty, just beautiful, just wonderful. So don't miss out on that. Now, I've got a few threads for you because if we're talking about stitching, then threads are always useful, aren't they? Let's be honest. So here we go. This is your starter, kind of starter kit or refill kit with your Gutterman. So in here, you've got all your neutrals, you've got your blacks, your navies, your greys. These are the ones you're going to use day in, day out. It's 1999 OEGQ 03. It also comes with a little stitch unpicker and that really natty little bit on the end. I've never seen that anywhere else and I, I really, really like that. Plus you've got your... Um, Stitch counter down the bottom there. Now, coming up tomorrow, John is back. Yes, he is. Shall we see what he's got in store for you? Uh, miss it, miss out at 8 a.m. And uh, then at 9 a.m., lovely Amanda Wyatt is back and she's making an adorable girl's dress. And then we've got some brand new fabric collections in at 10 with John. And then at 11 a.m., it's the ultimate tote bag again with Amanda Wyatt. So that is what you've got coming up tomorrow. Certainly one not to be missed. Uh, so make sure that you tune in 
nice and early at eight o'clock. You can always watch on repeat, but we can't ever guarantee that anything will be left by then. Uh, but thank you ever so much for joining me bright and early this morning. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Um, uh, but, but what else was I going to say? Yes, make sure that you check out all of your baskets as well. Don't miss out on anything. And if you've got any questions, you can always ring the, um, the number down there, which is free phone 0800 112 I will see you on Tuesday. I'm only on Tuesday next week because it's half ten. See you later. Bye-bye. Join us on Monday the 19th of February when guest designer Deborah Sims shows us how to sew a gorgeous reversible wrap skirt. Not content with being two skirts in one, this twirl-worthy pattern offers a choice of silhouettes, pretty binding, waistband ties and practical pockets. The best bit? It's a breeze to make! Sewing Bee star Deborah guides us through the pattern and an array of fabrics. Try on fashion-forward prints by Amy Butler, vintage ditzy florals and eye-catching hot pinks. So make sure not to miss out and start planning this new addition to add to your wardrobe. Monday the 19th of February at 8am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.